I'd, I'd point you to islamicawareness.com. We've got a manuscript of Imam Malik's Muatta, right? And it's dated to his lifetime, right? To, to when he was, now it's not the full thing, obviously, right? But it is, I think it's about at least 50, 60 hadiths that are in there, so, right? So, Obi, if I could quickly summarize, you've just proved to us that the Quran cannot stand the level of scrutiny that you put to the Bible yeah. because you had to leave the Quran, go to hadiths, and then quote a, a number of scholars to then bring it back to why that claim that Muhammad uh, had no miracles isn't completely accurate. But in fact, what it means is in the situation when he was impested for a miracle, he wouldn't give one because Allah had deemed so. Because in the past, when these things had happened, people saw the miracles but didn't believe. The Quran has no that context. So you had to go outside of it to find it. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is this, right? Yeah, so essentially what I'm you wanna hold it? No, I got I don't mind, mate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh you gonna hold it. Everybody can talk. Okay. So essentially what I'm saying is this. The Gospel of John makes it clear Jesus is in front of Pontius Pilate, about to be executed, and it says very clearly, John 19, I believe it is, that he's in front of Pontius Pilate, and it was a day of preparation before the Passover. I understand that Passover is a seven-day event. I understand that it's a week long, no problem. But the, the, the problem still occurs, right? Because we know, according to the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus' Last Supper is the Passover meal. Irrespective of what day of the week it is, the Gospel of John is very clear. It's a day of preparation before the Passover. So whether it's the last day or the first day, we know it's not happened yet because John makes it clear, right? So, do you understand my point? No, I understand your point. Okay, yeah, I yeah. mean, like, as, as David pointed out earlier, right, the Passover meal, like, it wasn't mentioned that Jesus was eating lamb. So again, it wasn't the final Passover meal. And again, there's various meals where they eat unleavened bread for seven days. That's not really a problem for us. I think they just had a last meal together, a last supper, in fact. You read that in Luke 22. In okay. fact, that agrees with John, actually. In Luke 22, they're like, he's drinking from the cup, he's eating from the bread. Again, this is bread, unleavened bread and wine. This isn't anything to do with Passover specifically like the final Passover day or anything so like that. So are you saying that the Last Supper is not the Passover meal? The Last Supper is not, uh, I mean, I guess. It's not the meal with the lamb. It's not the meal with the lamb. The so it's a, it's a Passover meal, sorry. So it's a Passover meal, but it's not the meal with the lamb. So it's yeah. not the conclusion. Well, okay, but but they're eating a Passover meal and John's saying that it's a day of preparation before the and Passover. And there's, there's many Passover meals because you eat unleavened bread for seven days. No, I understand that. But remember my earlier argument. This is what everyone needs to pay attention, right? The earlier argument is that the Passover, whether it's a week long or a month long, has not happened yet according to John. John is saying Jesus is in front of Pontius Pilate, about to be crucified, right? And he says it's a day of preparation before the Passover. Right. So I understand your apologetic here and how you're, how you're responding, I get it, but it doesn't really address the point because you're attacking another mountain. I'm not, I'm not there, right? I'm still here where, where no Passover is taking place. Right, so Obi, do you, do you not think that John could have been speaking about that specific day of being Passover as the day that is, right? so it's the seventh day, for example. Seventh day is called holy by God in the Old Testament, right? Yeah, so could, high Sabbath, could, you could say could high John, Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, Sabbath. Could, he, yeah. could John not be referring to that specific day as having special a special event over all the other days. For example, there's a seven day Passover event, but that event is specifically the Passover, the way they eat the lamb, they come together, they feast, yeah, whatever. Day, yeah. Yeah, I would, the preparation day is, is for preparing the lamb, essentially. Yeah. So the, 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 uh, all the Gospels will agree, even John, that essentially uh, Christ um, was being tried before the lamb was prepared. Yeah, so what I would say is this. I think, I think that John is being very deliberate here. Right? I think there's a reason behind why he puts Jesus' death before the crucifixion. Right? The reason is because he understands that the member. Wait, sorry, you yeah. said he put Jesus' death before the, yeah. the crucifixion. The crucifixion happens before the Passover. You, you, okay, okay. You, you according to John, according to John. You misspoke for a second. No, did you, I? You said that he put Jesus' death before the crucifixion. Did I? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, meant, I meant Passover. Yeah, I meant really Passover. Really yeah, yeah, I meant Passover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he put it before the Passover. The reason for that is because remember John's theology: Jesus is the Lamb of God, right? He's the Passover Lamb. You guys agree with that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's your Passover Lamb. No problem. Okay. Now here's the problem. You see, 
the reason why Jesus, uh, sorry, John, misspoke again. The reason why John does that is because he wants the idea of Jesus being the Passover lamb to comport with the story of Exodus, right? Everyone knows the story of Exodus. This is when obviously you have, you know, the angel of death comes and, you know, they say that you have to slaughter all of the, you have to slaughter the lambs. Otherwise, the angel of death will take your firstborn son. Everyone knows the story. You, what do you do in that story, by the way? You, put, you place the blood on the door. On the right? door, yes, yeah. yes. You put, place it on the door, yes, okay? And by the way, what's the speciality of that? What's the reason for that? You know it all? Yes, I do. For the, for, yeah. In, in, what's the reason in, for innocent that? blood. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, well, no, I'm, I'm no. blemished, I'm blemished sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. unblemished yeah. sacrifice. However, this, and by the, I was going to get to that, I was going to get to that, because it's it's another blunder by John, but I'm going to get to that in a second, okay? I'll explain everything in a minute, okay? So, when it comes to the, sacrif the sacrifice of the lambs before the Passover, you have to do it before the Passover, because if you don't, before the sun, go uh, the sun goes down, because remember, the Jewish day starts in the evening, then the angel of death comes and takes all of your firstborn sons, okay? So, when he does that, Okay, he is making this story comport with, with Jesus and his death, right? He needs Jesus to be dead before the Passover. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Now, Mark, well, well, Mark one second. I know, I know, I Now, so Mark. The Passover lasts a week. I understand. So it was that whole week. Yeah, yeah. Right? That specific day is the sanctified day, the seventh day, right? If it so happens that happens on that day, it's not John misreporting to try and add a theological point. It's just the case of where it is. Yeah, and again, but I addressed that when I said that it can't be the case because the Gospel of John says that it's the day of preparation before the Passover and then Jesus dies and you know you know the passion narrative then Jesus obviously dies and he's you know he's dead quite quickly everyone's astonished and right? as I aptly mentioned beforehand the Passover the event the specific day of that event is the sanctified day so it's the seventh day the Passover lasts the whole week here's the thing aren't they not supposed to work during that time yeah, yeah. on the right, seventh yeah. day they're not supposed to work, so, but the Passover. But, 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 but they had time. So the they had, Sabbath but, would be a long, but, like, but, but, week long but, but, but why? Did, if they're not allowed to work, then they shouldn't have been allowed to execute Jesus. But yeah. they didn't do it. it was a wrong. Well, they didn't do it. It was wrong. Uh, right, right. In fact, they would have done it if they were allowed to do it. That's the point. But the, the problem is this: your, your, your narrative is kind of slipping a bit here because remember, why did they bury Jesus so quickly? Why? Because the Sabbath was coming, and yeah. they can't bury them. During oh, the Sabbath? Yeah, because according to the book of um, Ezekiel, or yeah, well, it's, it's Genesis, Genesis, where the laws but are no, not but they, but they say, like, oh, if, if it, it, we need to make sure that uh, he doesn't come out of his tomb, otherwise it, he's going to look like he's, he's fulfilling the prophecy of... Uh, but no, not Ezekiel. Ezekiel's Old Testament. That, 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 that was like, was that Matthew, I think? Yeah, that was Matthew. Yeah, that was Matthew. That you were referring Ezekiel. to. Yeah, it's, Ma it's Matthew. And then, yeah. by the way, it was Joseph of Arimathea who buried Jesus. But, yeah. Yeah. So, like, uh, uh, it wasn't a hurry. Amathea, Amathea, Amathea. No, it's Arimathea. 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 Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, well, by okay, the way, I, nobody I knows where this place is, Armathia. No one knows where it works. Yeah, that's fine, that's irrelevant okay. to the point. <laughs> I meant, I meant Ezra, Ezra, by the way. What, what passage in Isaiah did you mention, David? Wait, wait, before that, before that, let me, let me, let me land this. Yeah, this we're, we're going, I know, no, we're going to start to get, yeah. Anyway, so just going back, okay? The reason why uh, John does this, right? You can come back and respond, I promise, okay? Is because he's trying to make it comport with the story in Exodus, right? We got that. Now, the reason why that's a problem is because it goes against it goes against the synoptic, synoptics that say that it happened on the Passover, right? Otherwise, you can't eat the Passover Wait, meal. I say it's wrong. Yeah, but the, the synoptics don't mention anything about it happening when the Passover meal itself uh, with a lamb had been eaten. That, no, no, no. That, that's that different. No, but it says they're eating the Passover meal. Yes. <laughs> There's many okay. Passover okay. meals. That's the, what the, 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 the you guys aren't here what I'm saying. No, 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 well, you're not hearing what, what we're saying. Uh, let me just address his question because he had a question before. Does it say the Passover meal? It does, yeah. yeah. But it's that's with no lamb, that's so all. it's not oh, the one with the lamb. Man. Well, one week long event, okay, so, well, no room so basically, with, without the lamb, that's the issue. That's the problem. Fine, okay. So effectively, they're all talking about an event taking place before the lamb itself is sacrificed. <laughs> and, 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 well, killed, sorry, prepared and eaten. Okay, I guess maybe the New Testament writers didn't understand what Passover meant. Okay, whatever. Maybe they did. They just didn't understand it the way you do. Yeah, just reading I, I understand it the way that the historians have said it no, and no, how Leviticus understands it. Leviticus, how Leviticus talks about it. No, no, name which historian, because you you said mention the way historians mention it. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned so, Leviticus. Yeah, yeah. So right, is, that was a that book not, of Moses. Is that not historical? It's historical, but you uh, mentioned historians. When you yeah, say historians, yeah. you're either talking yeah, about those who are doing critical solid scholarism or not. Yeah. What you, you do. Okay. Every rabbi in history so do you take, has conceded that the, the Passover, you, you, you eat you the pa take, when you call you something Moses? the Passover, when you call something right. the Passover, you are in now the Passover. Right. Do the you week take has started. Moses as a historian? Do I take Moses as a historian? Uh, through the Quran, yeah. What do you mean through the Quran? <laughs> so whatever the Quran says, I believe that is the, the, the direct word of God. And so I don't want to divert no, 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 just no, no, yet. Hold on, hold on, because that's a problem for us. Right? There's no For books. You, yeah. Well, there's no books written by Moses or even even from Moses in the Quran. For example, 
When the Quran yeah, yeah, mentions Moses, the yeah. stories of Moses, they're not mentioned in the story. Yeah, yeah. So when Allah mentions Musa salam, and what, what took place with him, we see that as historical because God is omniscient, so he would understand what happened in history. Well, I could just make that same thing. Yeah, that sure, doesn't I, I, mean I that that's historical. I'm just addressing your... You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course. So I'm you're just saying. making a bold claim, but we've actually got it's historical based, evidence that it was on Moses. my theological belief, yes. Right, right, that's fine. Yeah, but what, yeah. I'm saying, what I'm saying is, look, you have an error because like, you're claiming, look, we have to report and show these these supposed theological errors in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. But in your Quran, there's a big theological error. How do we know that Moses, in fact, said those very words in the Quran? We don't know that. Yeah, I understand what you're so saying. So if you take Moses' story, you have a problem. I understand what you're saying. I understand you understand what you're saying? Because but then you have to believe in the really, historical Moses, yeah, yeah. not the Quranic Moses. Yeah, yeah. Just the same that way you have to believe in the historical Esau, not the Quranic Esau. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I understand. I understand. I understand. Good. Right? So anyway, when it comes to the... And you asked me earlier, you said, do you understand what the purpose of the Passover was? Right? You remember you said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, so yeah, the yeah. purpose of it was and this is also another big issue for John because John says Jesus is the Passover lamb right he's the lamb of God the the unblemished lamb that's going to vicariously atone for the sins of humanity yeah, so no the, problem so the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, yeah, oh yeah also, well that's more I think yeah, it's yeah, revelation that's revelation fine it's John as well yeah so the reason why that's a problem is because the Passover lamb actually is not for the remission of sin this is the issue it's What's not the blood for that is oh god it's okay, leave it alone. It's, it's, fine, it's, it's fine, not a big deal. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna mess with me, man. It's just, yeah, I understand. Okay, right. So, the Passover lamb, the purpose of the Passover lamb is not for the atonement of sin. And this is why I said to you earlier, this is why I, I believe that John makes a theological blunder when he when he when he makes Jesus the Passover lamb or the lamb of God right wait wait, wait, wait. Um, you remember when um, Pontius Pilate was um, saying all oh, right um, would you rather me execute Jesus or this uh, Barabbas Barabbas yeah yeah a Barabbas is can 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 it be conceived as being the scapegoat in many ways well this is what they say I mean, that's, that's a problem with that is it has nothing to do with the context of what he just said. It kind of does because no, it doesn't. You're talking about the does. blood of Jesus. Yeah, you're talking yeah, about Jesus something. Is, Jesus is the lamb that is sacrificed. Yeah. Hence on the cross. You're claiming that Jesus Barabbas is no, a scapegoat. I'll, I'll tell you why. I, once blood. I tell you, you understand what he, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But let me explain what he's trying to say. You know, in the Old Testament, where it talks about the two lambs, yeah. and the one lamb would be sacrificed, the other lamb would be sent oh, into yeah. the wilderness. Oh, yeah. So some people say, I understand what he's saying. I, I don't know. They call it literary mimesis, right? And essentially, what they're saying is, what I can't remember which gospel it was, I think it's, my, it's one of the synoptics. When they say that, or when Matthew says that, he's kind of drawing a comparison uh, between Jesus, Barabbas, and those two lambs uh, that you find in, in the Old Testament. I think that's what he's talking about. I think about. you find that in Luke as well, in fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's, no, it's not really a problem, though. I don't, no, no, no I, I, didn't, I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was. But, but in, in response to your question about, well, the, the lamb itself wasn't the sacrifice, but yeah. the actual, the blood of the lamb meant great importance because it stopped the vendor of death the I agree. properties of the Israelites. I agree. So the blood itself, and remember the Old Testament says in Le Leviticus, which you just mentioned, right? Without the shedding of blood, there could have been no remission of sins. It doesn't say that. It says something like that. No, no. Paul, if I'm wrong, no, correct no, me. No, no, you, are, you are right. Like you are right. Yeah. When Paul quotes it in Hebrews, that's what Paul says. And he's quoting Leviticus, but he's misquoting it. Leviticus says, this is what will atone for your soul. It doesn't say it's the only way you can atone for your soul. Right. However, no, but, go on, uh, yeah, okay, go on. So, well, well, you heard my point, well, yeah? You're that's my... pretty vague, by the way. Because when it atones for your soul, what else can atone for your soul? I'll tell you, so, once he's done, I'll tell you. All right, well, go on. So, the idea of there being no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood isn't as literal as that. It means, essentially, that because God is perfectly just, that if you do commit a sin, and the wages of sin is essentially death, yeah, because death. through through uh, sin came, Paul, through sin came death. So what it means by saying that no, there no, is, the Old Testament <laughs> mentions that as well. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the wages that of sin, sin is dies. death. Not the wages of sin, but basically like wasn't it that the soul right. that sins dies or something? Yeah, or yeah any any soul that sins died according to Deuteronomy. So I think that's yeah, so I will have to check that. Okay, so sin is essentially analogous to death. The soul that sins dies. So, God in his perfect uh, uh, magnitude is completely abhorrent uh, to sin. So if you do commit a sin, because God is perfectly just, there needs to be some kind of way of recompensing that sin. And in the time before uh, we had the New Testament, there would need to be either substitution or the soul itself would die. The case in point in Exodus when the man is stoned for um, for working or gathering stones on the Sabbath yeah, 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 yeah. day. So it does not mean that, that there literally has to be blood shed for your sins to be forgiven, but God well, some demands are. justice. Well, some no, sins are punished. Because you think, yeah, right, Genesis symbolic, 8, yeah. for example, after the flood, right, Moses is told specifically that any man that kills a man, his, his life shall be taken, for the life of a man is in the blood of a man. 
and oh, the okay. any, any man take, that takes a life of man, his life. I know Job says, um, whoever sheds the blood of man, by his, man his blood shall be shed. I know Job says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah because he's, he's mentioning Genesis 8. Oh, okay. and Genesis 8 is the same thing. It has the same principle, right? Yeah. Basically, death, is, life is in the blood. Yes. Like, blood atones for life. Sure. It's just like circle yeah. within the yeah. whole Bible. So, and that's yeah. just how God does it. the thing, like, um, when you had um, the ritual of um, slaying the lambs, um, the blood is meant to atone for the sins of man, but only lasts for one year. So you have to keep doing it every year. Oh, yeah, that, that was David the point. If you read Hebrews, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's why there was one there's one sacrifice, now cleansed all. That was Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's got the blood. Because he's eternal. Because he's Well, he's, he's got the blood of God, so he's got more. His, his blood is more. Has more magical properties. Oh, yeah, go. oh, right, so it's not the substance itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about what it's fit to represent. It you, represents would, life. Would you, you agree that, would you agree the blood has magical properties? The blood itself, the blood of Jesus. Magical properties. No. Well, the lamb's blood. That's why. It's so fact, though. Yeah, the lamb's blood. Right, what, 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 the lamb's blood wasn't strong enough. That's why it had to be repeated every year. Uh, no, it wasn't the substance itself. It was the symbolic, like the life. But, but you wouldn't say Jesus's blood is just symbolic. Well, again, some will. Well, well, you can. Well, yeah. well, you can you anyway. Are, because because the I, I don't think that's magic blood. So you, you can still say it's symbolic because even in Hebrews, Paul uses it symbolically. But why, He's not using it literally. Why is it He's not saying you, you have drunk but, but, today but, but, the but, but, blood of Christ. But, 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 yeah. I mean, if it's talking about the Eucharist, by the way, the Eucharist, again, I don't believe in Eucharistic miracles. I can't believe in that because it's mad. The idea that human beings can actually drink the literal blood of Jesus Christ is ridiculous. Orthodox believe that as well. But, but, but wait. Yeah, 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 I know they believe that. <laughs> well, you're Catholic, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> he's not, he's a Protestant like me. That's sorry, what I'm sorry, you're not, you're, um, no, he's not, he's not Protestant. Yeah, he is. I was raised Protestant, but I, I go for a communical for now. But I, I, oh, he's a communical, yeah, but he's still yeah, Protestant, yeah, yeah. because okay. I've so, heard his belief. So, so yeah, again... Uh, so I have to clarify, do you believe in transubstantiation or not? I just want to finish my point. Look, look, transubstantiation. <laughs> oh, come back, come back. Okay. The reason why I don't believe in that, and I'll just make, make it blunt, abundantly clear, the Bible doesn't teach it. Luke 22, which is mentioned a lot by Catholics and Orthodox, does not teach that that specific blood will be drunk by every believer throughout time. No, Jesus clearly says, using memorial language, do this in memory of me. Drink the cup, eat the bread. It's a memory. Before I go, this is before before I, go I just want to ask, um, would you say any of the um, uh, holy relics, like the, um, the so-called... Um, the so, so, so called Holy Grail or the, the, spear. Or the spear or, oh, the spear or, 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 or what was, le was ever left of the actual wooden cross. Would you say they have any supernatural no. properties? No. All right. unless, unless God permits yeah. that. Just like the bones of Elijah, for example, God permitted that Elijah's bones would raise another man from yeah. the dead. So when, right. so when Christians were taught these actually did have um, supernatural properties that can help you, well, that, was that heresy? Not biblical. Well, the, the, you can't uh, deny them Christians. It's orthodox, yeah, orthodox yeah. do say yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I don't, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's not taught in the Bible, so it's not really The big funny. icons are yeah. anyway, but... Yeah, yeah, that's why like, I'm not really... Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I was saying earlier, when you said um, Leviticus and, and Hebrews and how he talks about only through the blood can you be saved and that sort yeah. of stuff. Now, the reason why I don't agree with that, there's two reasons. The first thing, it can't only just be blood, because in the same, further down in Leviticus, it says that you can actually atone for your sins with grain. I mean, I, there's no blood in grain. If I'm, if I'm, uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Is there blood in grain? I'm okay. Not... Well, uh, simple as this: there, there isn't enough grain on the planet to atone for your for everyone's sins. That's Perfect. What I'm no problem. No problem. And, and again, it's all about in order to have the sins forgiven, something must be sacrificed. There needs to be atonement for it. But it you... says grain can. can huh? But it says it says the offering of grain can atone so for your sins. So by the sins. way, a grain the... sacrifice, by the way, is for menial sins. So it's like right, smaller sins. The bigger sins, like for example, killing a person, right, stuff like that. Well, that's you'd, death. That's the death penalty. Yeah, but I'm talking about adultery yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to sacrifice an animal because the life of man is in blood. Yeah. Right. Now, can I, tell you something? can I tell you something? The the lamb is a, it's, a, it's actually funny that you said that. Oh, yes. the, the lamb actually is for unintentional sins. Right? I'll tell you why. It only it, so so this is why they say that the 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 sacrificial system, right? The the sacrifice of lambs and cattle and these and the blood, it can only atone for unintentional sins and it's the lowest form of atonement. The highest forms of atonement, look read Psalms. How did how did um how did David atone for his sins in Psalms? Well, are you talking about when he, uh, with the whole Bathsheba? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. And those are big sins. We agreed those would be big sins, right? And he's a murderer and he's all... How did he atone for his sins? He still killed a lot, a lot of sheep afterwards. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. But he atoned for his sins how? I believe it. You should know this uh, as a Catholic. For... I, don't, I don't know this. Really, so okay, cl as close well, to I'll openly just admit. I think okay. he just asked for forgiveness, I think. I think he asked for it, but he's still close. punished. Close, close. Severely. Close. He confessed his sins to the prophet Nathan. 
right? Mm. And that's how that's how the, his sin. That wasn't his song. That was second. Uh, uh, second is that second, Samuel? Second Kings yeah, twelve. Second Samuel. Okay, it might be second Samuel. Yeah. Okay. I think this, second, this sounds familiar to you, right? Second Kings twelve. When you mentioned Spawn, so I threw you off. Yeah, I threw you off. Apologies. Sorry. Yeah, I misspoke. I think it's second Kings twelve in particular. Okay. So when he confesses his sins to Nathan, then he says, "Your sins are forgiven," because confession is like one of the highest forms of atonement. Another one, if you look at the book of Daniel, what do they, how does Daniel say you can atone for sin? I'm not sure what you're talking yeah, about with money, you Charity, with right? Money. Sadaka, they call it Sadaka, we call it Sadaka, yeah? Yeah. Now, last one, what does Ezekiel say about how you can atone for sins? <laughs> Shuba, you know Shuba? Nope. Toba, uh, no, no, no. repentance, repentance. Yeah, repentance yeah. There you go, yeah, repentance, right? So these, they say, are the highest forms of atonement. And in fact, the lowest form is the sacrificial system. And in fact, it only atones for unintentional sins. And actually, if you commit a big sin, right? If you, I'm almost done, five seconds. If you commit a big sin, that, and you do one of these three things, it, it mitigates the severity of the sin, and then it can be atoned for through animal sacrifice. CEO. Go on, sorry, go on. This is, a, by the way, this is Jewish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. I'll, I'll go after it. No, I understand that's a Jewish interpretation. Yeah, yeah, it's Jewish. Yeah, yeah, because that sounds like Jewish. Oh, yeah. Things are like rabbinical. Yeah, yeah, it sounds rabbinical. Uh, yeah, right? It just screams yeah. rabbinical. Right? The, 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 the fact is, look. Did you say it sticks of rabbinical? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, the, the fact is, look, when we read the Old Testament, we see clearly that, that for example, Deuteronomy, as I mentioned before, right? That's without death, right? So basically, all sins lead to death. That's a fact. If there has to be a death, there has to be a death for all time. But, oh, for example, if any man, for example, every man sins on the planet today, every man, including me, right? If we continue in sin, then surely if God is just, all man must fall into sin, right? We read later in, uh, for, for example, Leviticus, you mentioned that yourself, right? There was grain offerings, for example. And you also claimed that the lowest form of uh, sacrifice was uh, the supposed blood sacrifice. I don't believe that's the case. One, because Deuteronomy mentions that, that basically there was rituals regarding, for example, going for the Holy of Holies, sacrifice a lamb in a certain way, or a bull, or the blood of two goats. For example, numbers, numbers literally just list the amount of times you have to sacrifice for each and every infraction. So it was very, it was considered very high by, the Mo by those at the time of Moses. Not very low at all, I don't believe in that at all. Right? When it comes down to it, look, if, if the Old Testament claims, claims, and I know that you claim that Paul is, is misquoting the Old Testament, but if the Old Testament does claim that without without the shedding of sins, I'm there was no remission of blood. Keep going, yeah. I'm listening to you. Yeah. There was, there, there, so without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sins. Yeah. Then it's evident that there has to be some form of shedding of blood. Now, the life of man is in the blood of man. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. If all men are due to die because of their sin, then there has to be either a sacrifice that atones for all men, or all men must die. How does God therefore save his his, his, his people? How does he save his humanity? Yeah. How does he do that? He comes to life becomes a man, dies and becomes crucified, and his blood atones for the sins for all mankind once and for all because he is eternal. That's yeah. a fact. So yeah, I, I don't I, think it's a problem for, I yeah, mean, yeah. our theology. And then, like, additionally, when he mentioned Daniel uh, about concerning, uh, what was it, like, um, what was the means you mentioned in Daniel about giving to charity? charity. Oh, yeah, charity. And, then, and it's, 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 it's Ezekiel about, uh, what was it, grain? Or what did you mention about Ezekiel? Uh, no, uh, no, grain is um, found in Leviticus. Yeah, and and Leviticus. Ezekiel mentioned what, sorry? Ezekiel's uh, repentance. Yeah, repentance. I, I, does he I, claim that's the highest yeah, form? Yeah, that's I, the thing. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm still wearing my so, fingers. Does he claim that's the highest I want to know if he said highest form. form. Yeah. And I also yeah. want to know if he said that that was what everybody should do going forward. Yeah. That's, Instead that's of, of, so did he ever, for lack of a better term, abrogate? Yeah, I, I don't think it was abrogated. I don't think he did. Uh, so th that's why I think From you, 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 you give a anyway. summary, yeah. but I don't think the summary is accurate. Sure, yeah. sure. So, so potentially there might have been an occurrence where um, simply um, giving to charity or, or maybe it's even commanded for somebody to give to charity as a means of having to forgiven. But I don't think he ever stated that that was from now on how you should do it going forward. Yeah. But do you see how that's problematic? How so? Because even if, let's, let's imagine yep. in this world that, tell you what, blood sacrifice is the only way. Then why mention those other it forms has anyway? To cost, okay, so effectively, um, yeah. like, like I said, you understand my point? Yeah, blood, blood, blood sacrifice, yeah. asking for forgiveness, giving to charity. Ultimately, whenever you commit a sin, you go directly against God, and it has to cost you something to recompense your relationship with God. Sure, that's what that means essentially. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like on a moral factor. Yeah. And the highest, thing, sorry, sorry, the highest thing, sorry, the highest thing it costs you is your life. 
Yeah. yeah so on a moral factor, when we're talking about human beings, human beings have to relate. To, they have to relate to what they're being told to do. For example, if I tell my son, you need to do this, otherwise there is consequences. If I then just decide to withdraw and then say, you know what, I'm going to take the punishment for you. I'm going to get the old battering rod and batter myself. And you don't know anything about it. You're just going to do it again. It's going to repeat the cycle. I understand. But if, if there is some form of repentance, either charity or giving alms or even just sacrificing a small thing of yourself. Yes. Like, for example, fasting. The Bible tells us to fast. Yeah, true. The Bible tells us to pray regularly. The Bible tells us to resist the flesh. So not to give us flesh. All these are acts of works. But that's not in the New Testament. The, the resist the flesh thing. We don't really find that in, um, in, in Old Testament. We don't find that language. We no, no, do no, yeah. find, for example, I think it's Nehemiah. Don't misquote me. It's either Nehemiah. Ohio or other land. For if, blood, if the blood of bulls and the goats and, and if the ashes of a heifer, cow, sprinkling the unclean sacrifices for the purifying of flesh, how much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit have offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your consciousness from dead, dead work, sorry, to serve the living God. So it's talking about the consciousness cleansing. So it's spiritual, really. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called, who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Now, bearing in mind, this is, this is language of deity. I understand. No, I, 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 don't, don't, I don't deny, by the way, the New Testament deifies Christ. I don't deny yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you don't. I don't because deny Because a lot yeah, of Muslims yeah, yeah. say the New Testament doesn't No, no, no I, I don't deny that. So I'm glad you at least admit. That's good. All these different listen to that right before. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. So remember, the, the first covenant wasn't dedicated without blood. Because you read from Genesis 3, the very first covenant, it was, a, it was a sacrifice of goats that gave the sin. All right. It was a sacrifice of goats. Or was it, it's a sacrifice of an animal. I don't know whether it's mentioned as goats or not. Ram, it, gives uh, the, yeah. it gives the skins to um, Adam and Eve for their clothing. So that's the first sacrifice ever recorded. According okay. to most churches. I, I, I understand. I know the verse is talking, but it doesn't actually say sacrifice. It just mentions the skin. Skin, yeah. So, so it's got to die. Yeah. So yeah, something's got to die. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, something's got to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to die. But it does, that's what I mean. But it doesn't say that it was only through that sacrifice that now it's it's square, right? That, that, it, it, it just, yeah, yeah, it no, just no, mentions but, but, the skin. But hold, but hold on. As I've said before, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Christ is the sacrifice that's once and for all, not those I understand what, what, what Paul is saying, yes, I understand what he's saying. So the, the, the thing that, for example, atoning is basically allowing to of covering up, of clothing. For example, if you read the Old Testament, right, God says that he will be white as well. Right? Genesis 3.15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah four, eight, God talking to Satan. Hey, I'll put your seed against her seed, it'll crush his heel and your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. goes with that verse that he done the skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah that's, we that's can address that as well yeah, if you want. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's the point I'm making is that Genesis 3 is just basically clear that that was the first sacrifice. I, 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 don't, I don't know where it says this is the first sacrifice and now it's atoned for your sins. All I know is that... You're the, not no, hearing what I'm saying. Example. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the right. first example. It's not atoning for anybody's sins. What I'm sin. saying to you, it needs to be clear. It needs to be clear. Ooh, otherwise, no. oh, otherwise, otherwise, it needs to be clear. Are we going to get into the content? <laughs> <laughs> it does need to be clear. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not diverge just yet. Let's not diverge just yet, right? The reason why we're here, okay. Paul is making an argument here, right? right. And he's he's putting, well, he's not, not in this case anyway. He does for Genesis 3 something, uh, where he talks about the heel of the, uh, the seed of this woman, right? Yep. But th this one here, it's not clear in the sense that is that first? Is that the actual first example of sacrifice, or was it just some of the use of clothing? Well, but where do you think the skins came from? I understand. So uh, we are, but you have to concede. I understand your argument. Right. I'm saying, but you are making an inference. You are making an inference. If you take right, the I'm making a historical inference. I'm not just no, claiming yeah, yeah, it's based I, on I, nothing. I understand. I understand. You know That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. You right. are making inference. A historical, whether it is an inference. I don't want to interrupt you, David. No? You're just going to say something. Uh, essentially, if, if you take the Bible chronologically, then that is the first recorded instance of a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, being, yeah. being done. Okay, fine, so yeah. now, if, if you insist that it has to be spelled out in a way where uh, the, the, the tafsir is included by, by, by God for every single verse, I mean, you can't then do that you with Quran, stand man. up to that with the Quran. You can't do that with the Quran. Well, I didn't, I didn't want example, to go here just now. How do you know yeah. that Andrew Gabriel is the spirit of God in the Quran? We don't know that. Uh, do you, yeah, do you want it's, that? It's our theology. Oh, fair <laughs> it's our it's our it's our theology, isn't it? That's that's just what no, we believe. No, that's, okay. that's, that's so, the point we're making. Yeah. Yeah. We we yeah. So why we're does here. it get to be? Why does the Quran demand a lesser standard of evidence? I understand this. It's from God, sure. But why didn't God include the tafsir with the Quran? I understand. For I understand. But remember, what does what does the Quran say? It says, "Obey Allah and obey the Messenger." So we have entirely well, okay. different corpus. That's that not clear. What does that mean? 
it means that whatever the messenger does and says and instructs you to do, that is also no, this is, part is of that, Is that what it says in the Quran? Yeah. No. No, no, no. So, so what does that mean, though? What okay, okay. Just logically, what would that mean? Very simple. Very well, well, that could be addressed to the community at the time. Yep. It could have been addressed to those people to obey the commands you see from God. Exactly. Yeah, but the, the Quran says it's for all time, and you know that. Come on, you know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's, yeah, I've heard you quoting it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. Yeah, but yeah, you, you're no, quoting no. it for a different. Uh, wait, argument. wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Quran yeah, yeah. doesn't say it's for all time. It says that Muhammad is an example for the Umar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then that proves my point. With, okay. Yeah. With the now, the messenger. now, when it says obey the messenger, I can interpret that simply as obey the things that are revealed during the Wahis and, and, and that only. I understand. So everything else he does as an action, ignore that. Yeah. But guess what? It's a good thing we have. His preserved words, then. <laughs> so it's like, it's a good thing we have his preserved words, I then. Doubt we do. Ooh. And, and, and that's I'm another argument. Oh, okay. 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 Do we completely. get into hadith now? Uh, or well, we but, but isn't that the preserved words you're talking about? Yes. But the hadith say, say a million different things that are contradictory. And effectively, even, uh, even the ones that, that are sahih, even yeah. the ones that are sahih, even yeah. from, from your, your six, like, uh, your six books, like, yeah. books, right? Muhammad is a double minded person. He says contradictory things all, all the time. Like what? Oh my goodness, what, what, what can I bring up for you? Um, for, for example, for example, the Quran says that he had uh, he had no miracles, he was only a warner, and the reason he had no miracles was because when, when uh, Allah had sent prophets in the past, they had the miracles, people still ignored them. But then the Hadith would tell you that, that he could bring out water from his hands. Yeah. yeah. So, well, who's correct there? Yeah, so when it says that in the Quran, okay. it's saying that the miracles that he's coming with, because remember, what were the Quraysh doing? The Quraysh were constantly badgering him. Oh, if you're from God, miracle, give us miracle, give yes. us miracle, give us miracle, right? And so it's not like the situation with Jesus or Moses where on command pretty much anything could just, any miracle could come. You see what I'm saying, right? Because that's how he was sent. The way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was sent, there are also miracles, there are also miracles. And by the way, the verse doesn't say he'll come with absolutely no miracles. It doesn't say that, right? The context is clear. He's talking about his nature of the, the way his prophethood works. It doesn't work in the exact same way as the prophets of old, which makes sense because he doesn't come from the line of Ishaq. He so, comes from the line of Ishmael. So, no, so you don't, because you, you, yeah, you, you, you wouldn't expect the prophethood to be the exact same. There might be some overlaps and some similarities, mm -hmm. but the fact that they come from completely different lineages Lineages, there has to be a different experience. That's what I would. That's so how I know. how you're making interpolation because the clear Quran doesn't even say that. It doesn't say anything you just said. Yeah. But you've told me to show you emphatically where it says in the Old Testament, Genesis three, that those skins were actually the first sacrifice. No, I, I, I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? No, of course, I understand. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I understand. If you're going to apply it, David's point is, if you're going to apply the same like method of reasoning yeah. with the Quran and apply it to the Bible, we can make interpolation just like you. Well, for example, I find it hypocritical that. Muslims appeal to Hadith and Tafsir. Tafsir and Hadith that are written hundreds of years after Muhammad we don't even know where they come from. But yet, well, when, when I, we... I wouldn't say... I will talk when, about it in a second. But yeah, when yeah. we like, appeal to our traditions yeah. and our church fathers is automatically a problem. Do you believe in that? I'm, I'm not, I, 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 can be, I believe in some of it. Because I believe in Tafsir. I believe in Hadith. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, I don't have to believe... Here's how it works. Because you yourself would, would admit, if, if I showed you a Tafsir, for example, from Ibn Abbas, I think that's Hadith, in fact, where it says that the earth is literally on an elephant. Uh, would no, you believe a, in a that? turtle, a turtle. Yeah. Oh, a turtle. So, yeah, yeah. But, but basically... Do you believe that's the case? Well, no, because the isnad of that of that um, of that hadith of Ibn Abbas, in, which, is, which is in the tafsir, it's weak. Okay. So again, yeah, right, and, and this is not a problem. Can, can, can I read yeah, a point? So oh, uh, go on, go on, uh, go on. a weak is not is not chain does not mean the information is correct. I, I didn't I didn't say it was, but it's it's actually worse than that. It's maldura. So it's fabricated. It's established. You got to remember who Ibn Kathir was. Yeah. Ibn Kathir was yes, he's a brilliant exegete without any doubt. I, I love Ibn Kathir with all my heart. Right. However. When it comes to other things, he includes a lot of information that he was just finding. Why? Because he's a historian as well. A lot of people don't know this. Ibn Kathir was a big sure. historian, so right? How do, and an exegete. So he's how recording do you everything. How what he believed versus what was he was Because he recording. gives the lines in his Badaya with Nahaya. In the name, then that's the name of the book. He gives the lines of transmission for everything that he gives. So essentially, if, if the line of transmission is, is perfect, you can uh, he believes in it. Uh, Ibn, Ibn Kathir? Yeah. If it's if, perfect. If, if the line is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Assume he believed in it, but that's not the nature of his diary. He's always saying this is what these people said, this is what these people said, and when there's situations where he doesn't know, he says, "Well, Allahu Alam." Okay. By the so, way, by the way, when was when was that the verse? So it's Arabic. When was that written? So right, his his modai wibla. But I went higher. Yeah, when was uh, that his, So he remember he's living in the 1200s. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's so, 15th century. Yeah. Century. He's quite removed. He's obviously yeah. quite removed from the prophets. But we we obviously believe that even from the advent of Islam, there were centers pretty much immediately set up you know you had in Yemen you had Mecca Medina you had um, uh, you had for start in Egypt yeah yeah 
because you know Christians don't like this when the, when the Arabs invaded you know Christian Egypt and then yeah. Bob doesn't like it. No, but, the, the problem yeah, I have. Yeah. Look, if time we have mikvahs, for example, I've had many Muslims in this park come to me and say that's invalidated. It's died. Which one? Which one? Tanwe al Mikbas, you know the Tafsir. Oh, oh, Mikbas, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They've, they've claimed that that is just like, we, we can't trust that. Oh, no, because yeah, yeah. The authority yeah. of it is based on like. They say it's Ibn Abbas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Ibn I know. Abbas is yeah, not yeah. really based on something that's foundational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, we what we have in your religion, and I'm sorry, it's just the truth, we have people making claims far removed from your prophets about events that happen they've made up. Now we can do that with the Bible. We can claim that Ibn Yahya gave, Ibn Dawood gave this and that. And then we could just have a long line and then we have some guy who's like hundreds of years later saying, this is definitely what happened. But yeah, that yeah, yeah. doesn't mean that's what happened at the time. And yeah, that's yeah. not historical. We, have, we don't have any writings, for example, from Ibn Abbas. We don't. Yeah, but we have we have things preserved from him. For instance, in Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim, in, in all of the six books, actually, there are many hadith that talk but about Sahih Ibn Abbas. Bukhari writing 200 years ago. Not well, he was born. Like. He was born 198 years after the Prophet. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. he's still writing far removed uh, from uh, even the time understand. of Abbas. And Abbas is called the Inca. What? Why couldn't you just write things down? No, I understand. I understand. But remember, we believe that he did, right? But it wasn't but in that's a codex. Some belief, but that's not historical. Yeah, yeah. You know but it was in a because if you read, um, you know who Imam Malik is, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, the second uh, uh, Imam. Imam. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the big one. That's the, right. the Malikis. The, the Maliki. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So rightly guided. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. was he was he during? Yeah, he would have been during the rightly guided generations. Yeah. 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 So uh, Imam Malik actually has a muatta, right? He has, you know, you know, uh, Imam Malik's muatta, right? Yeah, yeah, his, his book, yeah. yeah. So we've Imam Malik's, by the way, pretty close in time to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So we actually have a a manuscript. I'd, I'd point you to IslamicAwareness.com. We've got a manuscript of Imam Malik's muatta, right? And it's dated to his lifetime, right? To, to when he's now. It's not the full thing, obviously, right? But it is. I think it's about at least 50, 60 hadiths that are in there, so, right? Obi, if I could quickly summarize, you've just proved to us that the Quran cannot stand the level of scrutiny that you put to the Bible yeah. because you had to leave the Quran, go to hadiths, and then quote a, a number of scholars to then bring it back to why that claim that Muhammad uh, had no miracles isn't completely accurate. But in fact, what it means is in a situation when he was being pestered for a miracle, he wouldn't give one because Allah had deemed so. Because in the past, when these things had happened, people saw the miracles but didn't believe. The Quran has not that context. So you had to go outside of it to find it. Yeah, because the Quran tells us to go outside. It doesn't tell you to, to, to listen to Imam Malik. No, no, but Imam Malik is has, is is a is a muhaddith and a fiqhi, so he was known to collect hadiths from who? From Imam but Abu Hanifa. The Quran doesn't tell you to go and do that. Imam but Malik the, recorded hadiths from Sahaba, from companions. Of the, Prophet. the Quran also says it's a clear book, so a 50 verse one, so 11 verse one. Yes, of all, yeah. times, 20 verse, 29 verse one, for example. Yeah, it is clear. Right. But if it's clear, and it also says it's a clear Arabic containing everything. If it's yeah, clear, yeah. then why is it? First of all, we can't find out whether the angel Gabriel is the spirit or not. We can't, we can't find that at all. Because on the yeah. Royal Quddus, it's not mentioned as the angel Gabriel. We it's mentioned in Ibn, Ibn Kathir's al Badai when higher. You've, you've, gone, outside, you've, 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 you've yeah. gone outside of the Quran, which says it's clear, to talk. You don't understand what I'm saying. No, so of course I do. Yes, yes, yeah. of course. So well, why is it that we can't do the same? No, 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 I understand. You know but you've got to understand my position. My position is I take Sahih Isnad as well. Right? So if there is Sahih Isnad telling me that the Ruh al Quds, right, the, the, um, the, what we would the, call the Spirit of God, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the Spirit, yeah. the Spirit, whatever, right? If it's, if from that line we have a trustworthy narration saying that Ibn Abbas said this thing, then I would, I would take it, right? Now, if Ibn Kathir got it said, oh, well, you know what? People of the Israeliet used to say this thing, which he does include a lot of, right? Yeah, then I would say, no, I, don't, I, you know, I can listen to it. I can hear what he's saying, but am I going to take it as gospel? No, I'm not. Yeah. 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 So, um, last thing before we, we break up here. Right? It's, okay. been a, it's been a good conversation. Right, I'm, I'm steaming this. It's hot. But, but you, you said you were used yeah. to this stuff. I, 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 you're right. Yeah, you caught me out. You caught me I out. I just want to finish. You're you're man. Like, so, so say you. what you're going to say, and then I just want to finish. Sure, yeah, you yeah, were okay. actually talking about the Bible, and then I just like, land my yeah. plane there. Because obviously, we were talking about Islam, and like you've, you've, you've come to a conclusion that, again, like it'd be hypocritical to like go to outside sources and then 
try to interpolate them in the Quran, but yet they complain. Uh, I don't Christians. know, but you don't go to outside sources I anyway. Outside. I just don't. I don't believe they're mutawata. I don't believe they're like all authentic. Well, there you I, go. Believe I, believe, I believe it's a different anyway. So it would yeah. be it would be a false equivocation anyway for us to. No, but, but I can but, still have to believe that uh, yeah. church rather say certain sure, things sure, and they're yeah, correct yeah, on those yeah, things. Sure, sure, and the point to drive home specifically is when the Quran says it's a clear book. I think about three different times. Oh yeah. It also says. I think it says. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you can add like through twelve verse one and whatever. Whatever. But it says it's a clear book multiple times. But you also find that it then tells you in 3 7 that it's a clear book. However, some parts are clear and some parts are unclear. And if you focus on the parts that are unclear, your heart is poisoned. And if you focus on the parts that are clear, then you're your Gucci. So if I tell you that my house is clean, <laughs> <laughs> this is the Dawood the, 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 uh, the interpretation of the Quran. If I tell you that my house is clean, but several of my rooms are dirty, then my house can't be clean. If I say that my car is clean, but my boot is dirty, then it's not a clean car. So in the same way, the Quran can be clear if parts are unclear. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I would say that when even when the word all is used, like it's a, like for, it's a it's an exposition of all things. The word all. In, I refer you to Imam Shafri, who was also a grammarian as well, as well as a fiqh. The word all isn't used. Huh? It just says the Quran is clear, emphatically. Yeah, I, I, was refer, I was referring to another, of another verse, because yeah. he mentioned it earlier, right? Yeah. So when the word all, is like kulli, right? When that word is used, it doesn't necessarily mean actually everything. Right, it just means kind of like it, it encapsulates a section of that thing, and then you refer obviously to extra extra Quranic uh, corpuses to understand that thing. But, but the Quran the, doesn't even claim that you got. For example, like the verses like Muslims would bring up to claim that you're supposed to go to people outside of the book. The Quran doesn't claim that. For example, chapter three, verse seven. Right, it says that those are rightly guided, and Allah know what the Quran says. But there's also like an interpolation. For example, Al Qurtubi says it's talking specifically about. That was a right. No, no, he says he's talking about Allah himself, and that only Allah knows what is in there. But no, remember, some verses, you, yeah, some verses, yeah. Like, the, the whole context of Surah 3, verse 7 was basically like, uh, what was it again? So, Christians from Najran came to debate your Muhammad, basically, came to debate Muhammad yeah. and about Jesus being God, right, and all that stuff. And he was like, no, no, you're, you're lying, you've got it wrong, mate, <laughs> be quiet. And then, he just, and then Allah just completely sends down the verse saying, well, only I know what it is, and those who are rightly guided agree with this. And then they did Mubahala. They did Mubahala, and they, he said to them that if you, are, if you are upon the truth, then come with me, take your families and go into the desert, and whoever is lying, Allah will strike I down. I that's the rest of Ibn Kafir. Like, I've, I've, yeah, Ibn Kafir. I'm, I'm just remembering the, yeah, 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 the things yeah, yeah, yeah. like But basically, the Christian Nadran did that, and that's what the verse It was convenience, basically. But the verse itself says that Allah alone knows the Quran. That's a fact. For example, when it comes to like, Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's a lot you don't even know what they are, they're just random screwed up letters. I saw that in the Quran. It doesn't have a meaning. It doesn't have a meaning. So essentially, what, what, what it means is that... And how do you know what it means, by the way? Because it's from the tafsirs. But well, you don't know so what it means. It, well, well, the, the this is another right. opinion, another opinion. So what it means, the, the Quraysh, the ones who the, they were revealing the Quran to, that the Prophet Muhammad was revealing the Quran to, no. they kept pretending like they didn't understand what he was saying. Like, like the words that were coming out of his mouth were gibberish, right? So it'd be me, like, like me talking to you now, and you're saying, mate, I don't understand what you're saying. And so what Allah does is he says, it's like me saying this to you, A, B, C, I'm speaking English to you, I'm using the same letters, how are you not understanding me? Right, so that's what Allah's doing to them, but in the Arabic. Does that make sense? So Allah's being sassy. Kind of Where does yeah. this tafsir come from, by the way? I need to look this up. Uh, so you can find this one in, uh, it's in Kurtzby, actually. You're quite good. Oh, it's in Kurtzby. Yeah. It's in Kurtzby. I've read the whole of Kurtzby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's massive. Yeah. I wouldn't expect. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's al Badai when I hire. I think al Badai when I hire says that, so it's, it's twofold, right? One of them is what I've just said to you. The other one is that it was Allah sort of explained to them that, listen, you understand what what's the words coming out of his mouth because he's speaking the Arabic language, which you know, right? And the, the second part of that interpretation is also that there's a hidden meaning behind it as well. Does every Muslim know that? Maybe, you're yeah. maybe I'm talking about something. I found something in the Quran which it has no meaning. I should have made a note of it. It has no meaning. Alif Lam Mim. I don't know. Finish off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so look, I want to finish from the Bible. I'm right. basically just uh, just affirm their point, right? I'm not saying that the Bible in itself is just unclear and we can't know what's in there. Because, so we can know. It. I've been reading it for about 30 years on and off, just the last year, really seriously. Yeah. I haven't found anything that I've needed to look outside sources for, apart from things like cubits. Like, I've Google searched cubits before. Yeah. So like, things like that. With the Quran. I feel, I feel like without doing that, I still could understand it. But with the Quran, you need to go outside yes. of it to even apply context to it. 
I mean, mate, oh, that, that's what's your name, sorry? Which we don't Obi. really have. Obi, John. So jo that doesn't seem, if it's supposed to be God's perfect book, why do you need um, these other... No, it's not a new conversation. Because kind of remember, the Quran, it's, it's, it's the Surely God, what he wanted to say, he would put down in a book. So, if you see our, if you see our hadith, if you see our hadith, I'm just going to address it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up, Lars. Hey, 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 you cut my time short, Sokka. What's going on? Cut me short, man. I'm done getting nickel and dime by you, mate. It's done. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Would you guys like to uh, close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to... Sorry, John. Yeah, by the way. Last bit. I'll just meet you afterwards, anyway, bro. Yeah, yeah, There's always Ann Wormstar where I live, so. Nice. I left, I left quite a few. Jesus, I'll, I'll, I'll chat to you after, bro. All right, chat to you after, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. So basically, I just wanted to read the rest of Hebrews 9, which you brought up earlier. You, you made a claim about Paul basically, like, misinterpreting the Old Testament or something like that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he does it. Have, I, I did want to bring this one thing up oh. as well. Because oh, right, right. this is, and this kind of connects with what we were saying. I'm sorry. So, in, in the Psalms of David, right? Yeah. And again, David. David demonstrates two different ways of, of, of atoning for sin, right? He demonstrates that you can atone for sin through confession. Obviously, you, I think you quoted Kings, was it? Was it in King? yeah, Second Kings? Second Kings, yeah. 12, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. When, he, when he confesses his sins to the prophet Nathan, yeah. right? And this expiates his sins. And then he also mentions the idea of prayer and repentance. Can I just interject for a second? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, very quickly. I'll start to break you up. He still got punished very severely. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. after it, that. Oh, when he was surrounded by his enemies and things like that. Yeah, uh, so, surrounded by his enemies, um, his wives would get given to his uh, to the people in, in, in yep. his, his nation. Um, the sword would never depart from his house, and the son he fa he fathered with um, Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, wasn't his son yeah, was Absalom? Yeah. It was either Absalom or his other son that basically Absalom tried to his wives. Absalom tried to kill him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. So um, essentially, so he has these two ways of, of atonement, which he demonstrates. But there's still payments. No problem. Yeah. But yeah, okay, fine. But there's he's punished, no problem. And we believe that as well. We believe that even if you repent, if you've done something wrong, you, you can still be punished. We believe that as well. So when it comes to the Psalms, right? David makes it clear in Psalm 46. He says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Now for, for Christian theology, this is quite damning. Right? And, and the thing is, I'll, I'll tell you why in a okay. second. And you can respond, obviously, right? Now, the reason why it's damning is because even Paul acknowledges that it's damning. And when Paul quotes it in Hebrews 10 5, you say Psalm 46. Psalm 46, there you see it? Oh, 46. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's yes. Yeah. Now, in Hebrews 10 5, when Paul is quoting Psalm 46, mm -hmm. chapter 40, verse 6, he says, Therefore, when Christ came to this world, he said, sacrifice an offering you did not desire sounds very familiar to the psalms but a body you prepared for me so it's almost as if paul is intentionally changing the words of the psalms right in order to make it comport with his theology which is that of jesus coming to this world to die for your sins vicariously right but that's not what what the psalms are saying the psalms are saying god doesn't need any of these sacrifices or sin offerings anything like that no that's his ears are open yeah, for yeah, you no, it's not saying that so that's let me let me read it out ability of paul i yeah. guarantee there's an answer guys guys let, let me read it out that's not what that ever this saying. is sorry this is psalm 40 verse 6 did right? you understand my argument yeah, yeah, I understood yeah, it. It's this just is like, the NKJV. At, at the so time, did, did God need a sacrifice then? Or I, 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 I'm not as very... Well, the argument from Paul is that you always need it. You're looking for an answer from me. <laughs> yeah, as no, always a, a new Christian, you're looking no, for an answer no, no, from no, me. No, no, okay, no, no, no. Okay, right, so yep. I just want to read this out, right? So 46? Yeah, it's 40 verse 6, yeah? Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, my ears you have opened. Burnt mm -hmm. offering and sin offering you did not require. Mm -hmm. So is this talking about David alone, or is it talking about every generation of Israelites, including the Gentiles? This is this is speaking to David. Right. Yeah. So how do you know that at a specific time, and this is an argument I make about the whole Bible, that God didn't, for his specific purpose, require him to do these, to, to remember, he's already received the atonement for his sin by being punished, right? How do you know at that time, that for that instance, he wasn't, that, that wasn't a sacrifice solely for him? How do you know that's not the case? It's problematic because, no, 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 Paul, that's, that's, that's yeah, yeah. At that time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But Paul makes it clear that it was always the case you needed blood sacrifice there's there is no the but remember 922 hebrews 922 there is no remission of sin right, without so we, the shedding of blood that's why i, I wanted to read already. hebrews 9 yeah. to you isn't anyway that, because isn't that the new covenant no, no, no. It's, it's, no, the new covenant, oh, no, no, no. The yeah, new covenant is, is completely blood um, sacrifice. Okay. Completely. This is why I wanted to read Hebrews okay. 9, because I like context. It's Let, my friend. Let's not get such a... We're trying to wrap up and, and then we can oh, carry sorry. on. Yeah. We're going to be all day. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, so, so I, I want to read Hebrews 9 quickly just to wrap this up yeah. anyway. Give us the context. Yeah, because like, I was reading the context anyway, and then it just led up to Islam and stuff like that. Let's but I'm just... That tafsir. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip all this. Ibn Yahya, let's go. We love tafsir. Yeah, Ibn Yahya, tafsir. We love it. 
Oh. The media is deaf necessary. It says it's necessary. By the way, that's not that's basically added. That's not in the actual. But for where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. That's a fact in the Old Testament it was dedicated by blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all people according to law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. Now, I mentioned earlier that he mentions earlier in this, in, in this chapter, right, that in order to get before the holiest holies, right, you had to sacrifice blood. Because there was, the, there was the tabernacle where God resides and there was like the temple, basically like, the, the congregation couldn't even get in the first bit, right? And then basically, the, no, sorry, the congregation could get in the first bit, sorry. The congregation were in the first bit, then you had Moses and Aaron in the second bit. But in order to get into the, the holiest of holies where God was, or the sanctuary, or the, sorry, the temple where God was, you had to sacrifice an animal, basically. Right? That's what that's what Paul says, yeah. right? Yeah. And Levitical priests and all this stuff. Yeah. 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 But, saying, yeah go on. saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded to you. Then likewise he sprinkled of blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. No, she doesn't say sins. Doesn't say sins. There is no remission of what? So what, what, what do you think is, so for example, remission of what? Well, no. he's, he's I would assume sins, no? Well, he's already mentioned, well, transgressions are sins. You believe as the Old Testament mentions, oh, yeah, the, the term sin is just basically transgression. There's many different right. renderings, yes. Right, but yeah. uh, in, in a sense, sin, being a transgression, it's not, it's, it's not always the case in the Old Testament that a transgression is like solely forgiven by blood itself. Well, we've, got, we've come to that conclusion, right? No. no well, in the Old Testament, as you mentioned Leviticus, right? There was bread sacrifices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a show bread. Ogarina, so it, was, it wasn't always the case every time. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with yeah. what you just said there. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, there yeah, I agree. That, that, yeah. That's my point. Okay. And Paul's made, he's, he's made that point earlier in Hebrews. If you want me to read back for it again, I'll no, do no, that. No, 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 it's okay. It's because okay. The, the problem is yeah, we yeah. have to read content. No, yeah. no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Then likewise, you sprinkle with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of mystery. And according to the law, almost, almost all things are purified with blood. Saying almost all things. A pure boy blood, and without shedding blood, there is yeah, almost, almost all things, not all things, almost all things. Right? Without shedding blood, there is no remission. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of all things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves were, were with better sacrifice these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God. So remember, like Christ is our what's it called? It's like Moses, mediator? so yeah, he's like a mediator, yeah. but there's another word for it. He's like a high priest. priest. Exactly. Yes, that's yeah. the word. Yeah. He's the, so Christ Which is, is the problematic, but I'll tell you in a second. Everything. Can I tell you? Right, 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 let's just stay on context. Because if we run away from the context, we're going to get the point. I know. Right, I want to know as well, but let's just stay on context. What? But yeah, not that he should offer himself. Not that he should offer offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. So he's not doing what Moses did. He then would have to suffer of often since the foundation of the world, but now once at the end of ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this is judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of Mary, many, sorry, to those who eagerly wait for him. What a poem. Yeah. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. So it's, it's abundantly clear, look, the verse is not talking, so when Christ is saying, look, he's sacrificed all sins. He's not saying that the Old Testament mentioned that, oh, well, sacrifice is only done by, by um, blood. That's not the mention, Paul, that's not what Paul's claiming. But he's claiming in the Old Testament, the only way to admit sins was by blood. So the only way to admit full transgressions eternally was by blood wrong. That's why they did it once a year. They didn't do it every day. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. Because it's more permanent than just Because they would, take, they would take all the sins of the community, right? Yeah. And they put it into one yeah, land. Yeah, they would. Otherwise, know, they would just all come up with bread and just throw so it I in tell you, So I tell you something crazy now right, for right. Yom Kippur, right? Yeah. So there's two lambs. There's two lambs that are brought. Is this metaphor, is this, is this no, no, this is in this is in Leviticus. Yeah, it's, so it's in Leviticus. Yeah, yeah. Is it not a verse? Yeah. Right, okay. oh, God, it's on Yom Kippur. I, I, I think it's Leviticus. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. So there's two lambs. That's the, the first thing, lamb. Right, you want to say Yom Kippur is a tradition? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know, right. I know. It, it is, it is mentioned. And they have a Talmud, but so there's maybe. I understand. They may be adding. Yeah. So but do you do you agree that there are two lambs? That they have two, right? I'd have to look it up. I'd have to look it up. Okay, no problem. I'll, I'll look it up. So, from my I'll, understanding, I think there's only one lamb to this. Okay. There's two lambs. The first lamb takes on all the sins of the community, 
and then the second one is slaughtered. Isn't it a goat? Could be a goat. I'm not too sure, right? Yeah, right. It will have to read Leviticus, right? I've never known about two. But yeah, there's two. I've not, not heard of two evil. So the first one is sent Leviticus into the wilderness that has all the sins of the people. Oh, say, the true. second uh, one is slaughtered. Uh, oh, no, 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 that's true. I know numbers list. You remember like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's right. Is balls. it numbers or Leviticus? So numbers list like bulls, goats, like yeah, yeah. two. Where's the two? There's two One gets slaughtered, one gets sent to the wilderness. Sent to the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Wait, wait. Did you say that numbers? Look in numbers. The first few chapters. Of and my point is this, right? My point is this. Uh, the one that is sent into the wilderness yeah. isn't um, even slaughtered, but that has all the sins on no, it. No, because he, he bears our iniquities. He it, bears the community's exactly. sins. Exactly. But then why isn't he killed like Jesus is? Because remember, Jesus is the Lamb of God. So why wouldn't that be mirrored in the Old Testament? With that, with that lamb that it's has all question. the sins. Like, it's interesting. So what was the question? Again? So, 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 Samuel, what, what, does it even need to be though? What, what, I don't know. You guys believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God who died for, by character. I don't see Christians losing any points if that's true though. No, what, what, what's your point? My point is this. Point, okay, my point is this. Yeah. There are two lambs. We yeah. all agree. You said you remember. You, you want to know why is in the world this one killed? Exactly. What, does it matter? It, it, it does. Because, Tell me how. Because if it's not killed, the one that contains all the sins of the community, yeah. well then, why does Jesus need to die for everyone's sins? Because remember, Jesus takes on all the sins of humanity and then he's slaughtered. This is the new covenant. But, but sure, hold on. I understand. I understand. So, so surely it could be the case that by resurrecting again, he, he in essence becomes symbolically both those lambs. Because one goes free into the wilderness. Maybe. The maybe. Other one dies. It's an interesting apology. Right, at least you're saying maybe. And even, yeah, yeah, even yeah, the Jews have a tradition of Messiah ben Yosef and then the Messiah ben. Um, There's many messiahs in the Old Testament. Many messiahs. I mean, even again, Cyrus is a messiah. Yeah, I know Cyrus called Messiah, but I'm talking about who's considered anointed. Even Jewish tradition mentions this. There's going to be one anointed figure who's going to come back. Blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada. But we, don't, we don't have to. Yeah, we don't have a family. In fact, Obi, Obi, Obi. Obi. This is, this is Islamic tradition. Uh, Obi. Joe, yeah. not, not, not your tradition. Joe, yeah. So Obi, right? Doesn't the Quran say, well, Jesus says in the Quran, blessed am I in the day that I'm born, the day that I will die, and the day that I'll rise again, right? Doesn't it say that? It says, blessed, uh, peace, peace be upon, upon me the day me I was born, peace be upon me the day that I will die, and peace be upon me the day, the day I'll be uh, brought, brought back. Yeah. So what, was, was Jesus a pure boy according to the Quran? Um, a pure boy. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Uh, uh, yeah, he was Gulam. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Gulam Surah 19 says he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So would Jesus be lying in the cradle? Would he be lying? Would he be lying? Uh, I don't believe he would be, no. Okay, so then Jesus must have died then. No, are you, are you using the Quran verse, uh, sort of Imran, what you just yeah, 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 yeah. So what that's saying is that he, he was born, obviously. We all believe he was born. That eventually when he comes back from heaven, doesn't he will he die. Really comes back from heaven, doesn't say that. Much. Okay, but the chronology, this is how we understand the chronology. Yeah. So when he comes back from heaven, right. he will live for 40 years on earth. We have this is Mutawatir hadiths, by the way. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's hadith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't make sense of a text. Because but then we're going to go back to the same argument. Oh, you can't go outside. No, no, no. no. We, we, do, we have right? to go to that same argument. But I'm talking about Jesus now because Jesus came to be a pure boy according to Surah Maryam. I don't understand the connection. Well, if he's pure and also the hadith, if you want to go in hadith, you can, that's fine. The hadith claimed that all men have sins, but Jesus and Mary, Mary don't have sins. They're not without sin. Um, so, so we we believe that obviously with the prophets, none of them have sin. No, you have to believe that, that Muhammad had sin. No, no, no. All we have to look, here's what I want brothers to do. Yeah, read the Bible. Every time they mention the Bible, read the Bible. Every time they mention Hadith, bring the Hadith. Because the problem is, if you don't do that and you speak from your own minds, you're going to come up with mistakes. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying not to do. More so now than. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this. If my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases His glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? So he knows he's lying. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, let's read the context, right? <laughs> Let's read the context, right? So this is you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I was waiting for you to think. I'm gonna read. So what advantage then has the Jew or what is the point of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because then were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make their faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not, indeed. Let it be true that every man is God, every man is a liar. As it is written. Yeah, sorry. As it's written, that you may be justified in your words and you may overcome when you are judged. But if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unjust who inflicts wrath? I speak as a man. So remember here, like, God, God is saying, look, if our righteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? So if we're unrighteous, unrighteous as in humanity, if we're unrighteous, but that demonstrates that God is, is wholly good, wholly just, does that make, so, that has make, does that make, sorry, does that make, God just for inflicting wrath? No, certainly not. But then how would God judge wrong? But if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I still judged as a sinner? Bearing in mind, he's not saying here. It's a that, quote. Yeah, it's a quote. 
He's it, he's just says, someone might yeah. argue that yeah. line. Yeah. yeah, so he's talking about himself. He's so not. Why would he quote it? Somebody it's might argue that. For example, the context oh, before well, literally says, yeah. it, it's oh, literally no. Paul. <laughs> it does. Yeah. So it it's does literally it. Paul saying, but if our righteous demonstrates righteous God, what shall we say? Is God unjust with in, in flicks off? I speak as a man is in brackets. Yeah. He's quoting, that's what David is saying. So, for, for, for example, you mean Paul? Uh, John, yeah, Paul's quoting. John, John might say that he's nine foot tall. Like, like, that's what I'm, I'm not saying it. Uh, I'm, I'm not declaring it. I am quoting what John might say. So, so the, 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 um, the context there is that he is saying that others might say X, yeah. but why don't we say this? Paul himself isn't talking. If he was, they wouldn't be in quotes. Yeah, yeah, and then he says in verse 8, in fact, agree That's with all. what David just said in verse 8, right? And why not say, let us do evil that good may come, as we are slandered report. Now, we're slandered report that even today. We're reported today as Christians, okay. as those who believe we can do what everyone and when we're saved, it doesn't matter. The, the blood of Jesus is going to save us. Like, you know what I mean? Salvation through grace. Yeah, that, all that stuff. That, uh, that's hello, what we're reported hello, to say. Hello, yeah. But Paul is saying, and why not, why not say, let us do evil as good may come, as we are slandered report, and some affirm that we say. Their condemnation is just. So those who believe in that and those who portray those acts, their yeah. condemnation is, is just. Those saying those quotes that he, he mentioned. Yeah. So it's not, it's not Paul yeah. speaking in the first person. Yeah. He's quoting them. I understand. I understand. Okay. I, 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 let's agree to disagree because we see in the Old Testament where Isaiah literally says that God has deceived him. And in fact, God has said he sends a lying spirit. Yeah, so, he send the lying spirit. so right. So if God is sending a, to deceive the people, but he's <laughs> he's still lying. <laughs> so deceiving. No, no, it's not, it's not that God is himself deceiving. You it's God sending the lying. Then you will turn around and say to me that when Allah deceived the people with someone else on the cross, that that's incorrect. No, no, Allah says he's but he the best of Isaiah. deceivers. He doesn't. Well, our God doesn't say he Mecca, deceived Mecca, anybody. Mecca he doesn't mean a, deceiver. It, it does mean it's this Cairo Macarine. The Macca literally is a root word of deceive. That's a fact. Okay, oh, <laughs> which, which, like, which, which grammarian says that? I mean, many, many Arabic grammarians. Give me say one that. grammarian that says it. Give me one grammarian that calls him deceiver. I want, I want a classical scholar, please, that says Mekir means well, how, how, how classical are you talking? Oh, sorry, go on. What? Oh, sorry, did you want me to stop uh, talking? How classical are you talking? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm oh, sorry, I thought you said stop talking. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't know what. So how, like, how, okay. how, how far? Do you want 8th century, 9th century? What, what do you want? 8th yeah, eight, eight century is perfect. You can find 8th century. I mean, while he's looking for that, so what, why did um, Alan Fielder need to deceive? I've always wondered this about the whole cross. Uh, about the crossing. Now, why here's the other thing. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it's saying. Yeah, look, work it, work it. It's not what you think. It's not Allah changing the person's figure and He made somebody else there. I would argue something else. I would argue that it was made to appear so. The New Testament writers are making it appear so that Jesus was killed on the cross. It's not Allah who it's, did it. It's talking about Allah, no, not No, no, it's not, it's not. It, it read, read the verse. In the Quran. Yeah. Read the verse. Yeah, yeah, get, it, get, get the verse, verse. get the verse. It said, doesn't it literally say, but it was I, made made it, it, I made it appear I didn't say I. Jesus. It says, but it was it made was to made appear, appear so. Why was it made to appear though? I've always wondered because that. The What's new, the reason? Because the New Testament writers are the ones who made it appear so, because they lied. Okay, That's so what we would say. Same oh, words. So, so, sorry for interrupting. You understand what I'm saying? No, sorry for interrupting. Right? Yeah. The same word, Makkah, is actually used in Surah 6, verse 123. Right? It says here, even so, we place in everyone ringleaders of its wicked ones to deceive, or Makkah, or Kerim Makrameen, therein, well, it doesn't say Kerim Makrameen, sorry. Therein Arabic, Limkar. Well, is he. Somebody put something on me. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's people, man. Even so, we place in every city ringleaders of its wicked ones it say, to, to deceive. No. They're in Arabic, Liam Karu. Um. But they against themselves shall they scheme. Yeah, so, Yom Karu. Show me the, show me the... So that's basically, this is the site I went from. Yom Karu. And it's basically like. Who is, it? who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Yeah, who, who's, who's, who's... So, who, Obi, I, I so, so basically, yeah, the, so. The, the, this, is to, this is an Arabic remember. So it's... it's no, no, so Arabic. I'm asking for like Sufyan bin Thawri, I'm asking for like, you know, even Imam Abu Hanifa, who's a grammarian. So you're, you're asking for Muslim scholars who agree with your position and not mine. Well, to these, these are the earliest scholars, that, I mean, the earliest scholars, what do you want? The earliest scholars are Arabic? Sufyan bin Thawri. He's early, he's Was early. he a Muslim? Of course. But that's a problem. Right? He's just looking for Muslim well, scholars. Yeah, because they understand the Arabic language. They're, they're, so you're you're Arabs. telling me there's no Arabic scholars now who would, who would say that Makkah means to the sea. I don't know. I'm not too sure. But I know what the classical scholars say. So, so is there any Quran that, that I could read? No, 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 no trust. He, he says the classical yeah, scholars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it means is the scholars that agree with the like you're saying I can't, you can't trust the translation. You have to read it in Arabic. You'd have to go to transliteration. Like you would with the Hebrew. This God seems pretty inflexible, man. Well, then you'd have to say the same thing about Tanakh. It's in Hebrew as well. You can't just understand Hebrew. 
right? It, in fact, you know what Jews would say to you? You know what Jews would say to you? The Jews would say to you, you have never read the Old Testament and you've never read Tanakh unless not only you speak Hebrew, but you are conversant in Tanakhi Hebrew. So, so at the end of the day, it's the same argument. We would say that if you are not, if you're not able to access that language, then you are a slave to the translation. I think our problem is, bro, that God asked our God, even according to the Jews, invented many languages and he invented a way for many people to get access for example for yeah. example it says in the old testament in isaiah fact and most jews will agree with this yeah. that there will come somebody who'll be a light to the gentiles yeah light to the gentiles right you can't be a light to gentiles if there's no way figure to, to, to speak to the gentiles yes, or to yes, even converse yes. with them yeah, yeah right and if all nations will know this messianic figure how are they going to know it what else does isaiah say though he says that everybody will grab onto a jew and will ask for them to, under, to, to give them the, uh, the knowledge of God. But the Jews are misguided and the Jews are seeds of the devil according to the New Testament. So it doesn't make sense. And it says that when the Messiah no, it doesn't is supposed say, to- Hold on, no, no, misquote. It doesn't say that the Jews are the seed of the devil. It says, because there was Jewish followers of Jesus. Did you know that? Uh, very few, I mean, the disciples. Well, but but uh, there, well, were Jew, no, there were no. Pharisees that followed Jesus as well. Uh, who? So after, so basically, after Jesus died and rose again, yeah. there were there was Nicodemus, there was others that followed him as well. According to Acts, and I'm, I'm talking according to Christian history. So there were like ten thousand or so supposed Jews. That's that according to Acts, isn't it? That's, that's I mean, Acts does say that as many. Yeah, yeah. And I, I yes, I, I concede your tradition. And also, he also says even even during Jesus' time that many followed him. They many forsake what they were doing. I yeah, no, they saw his they saw his miracles. But then here's the problem you see, right? And this is why for me the whole Jesus narrative doesn't make too much sense. If Jesus is doing all these miracles, feeding the 5,000 twice, by the way, right? He's bringing people back well, from the once. dead. Huh? Once. No, it, was it, it twice? It, it, Two feedings of 5,000. Oh, no, no, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it was four. There was one with four. Four than five. Yeah, oh, sorry, okay. Yeah. So, so 9,000 people, right? Okay. In total, so, sure. In total, yeah. Yeah, so if, if that's happened, he's bringing people back from the dead. Jairus, Jairus' sorry, father, no, sorry, Jairus knows him, brings him and brings back the, his, his, his dead daughter. Everyone knows him. Then why is it when he's in front of Pontius Pilate, all the Jews are unanimous. Crucify him, crucify him. Doesn't so, make any sense. Uh, because very, they're accusing very, him of Very simple, yeah. So they so, believed in him and then they disbelieved? No, but you well, see. It weren't, it weren't, they that's why the Pharisees themselves, yeah. for the first sake order, did not believe in him. Yeah. Many of them didn't. In fact, I mean, many rejected The him. whole crowd of the Jews are saying crucify yeah, him. Yeah, but it, is, uh, the whole is, crowd, crowd, is the crowd composed of everybody who already believed in him or the mob who was simply following the Pharisees? Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. So, didn't, didn't why is it pay the people in the crowd? They got they got people in the crowd to shout. Um, oh, I don't know about that. Him. That's uh, I, I, there were many the, Sadducees and Pharisees that didn't follow Jesus at his time. There were many. I understand that, but here's the issue. You see, remember what I what I built for you before? The idea that Jesus did all these miracles for everyone, and then the crowd is so enormous that remember Pontius Pilate can't do anything. It feels like a, a, a earthquake. He doesn't want to, right? He doesn't want to crucify Jesus, right? But he says he's overpowered by the Jews. There's just too many of them are asking for his crucifixion. He doesn't say there's too many. He says well, that. Why does he feel pressured to release? Uh, because they basically said to him, like, like, we will tell Caesar, basically, that you're, that you're not, you're not, you shouldn't be in this role or something like that. No, but it describes the roar, the roar of the crowd. Right. You agree with that, right? I, I agree there were many there, but that doesn't yeah. therefore negate the fact that Jesus had many full of him. But if there were many, you would hear, you would expect to hear at least some in the crowd saying, no, don't crucify him. But you don't hear nothing, and nothing is yeah, recorded. But, but okay, no, no. That, that sounds that, like an argument from science. That's completely, right? like, completely incorrect. Because if the majority are yelling a thing, and the minority are yelling the opposite so thing, so it's a minority. You will not hear. So them. you agree with me? It's a minority. But I am telling you that the crowd was not composed of those who witnessed all of his Christ's miracles. Why not? That's what I'm telling you. How can that be possible? We literally just because we, they, we literally they, said nine thousand people witnessed him feeding the five thousand. Yes. And the four thousand. Can, can you then tell me? And what happened at the end? They went home. Can you then tell me that the crowd was composed of that 9,000 along with people who also... I mean, how big do you think the population of Jerusalem is at that time? I, well, you, you're the one who told me that... It would have been um, way more than 9,000. How many? It's, how it's many? It's all over a million, because you, you told me that... Uh, yeah, that, 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 um, that that's yeah, 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 what you told me, so it's over yeah. a million. Yeah, yeah, easily. Oh, wait, hang on. You accept that now? Huh? You accept that now? No, I'm saying you told me that. I, I didn't look it up, but you told me that. So okay, it, okay, okay. Yeah. By your account from last time, yeah. it has to be at least over a million. Okay, so so you're you're telling me that all these people, there's I don't know, out of out of how many Jews that are there, are shouting for his crucifixion, so, no one is there except for Peter. No one's there except for Peter supporting so, him. Okay, and so, even then he's all, even then Peter's example, denying. Right? Even then, Peter's saying, no, I don't know, I don't know. You're forgetting, the New Testament does describe his disciples yeah, running off. Well. How yes. do you know that many didn't run off from him? Right? For example, it says in the Old Testament that the sheep will be scattered. They will run. 
So how do you know that wasn't the case, that many fled, in fact, because they were scared of being attacked by Romans and the Jewish Pharisee ruler? Well, if, if it was as big a number as you guys are as you guys are saying, I would expect to see at least more than one person there at the, at the crucifixion. It, it's as simple as this. Um, it, it's like saying if Muhammad was actually a prophet, why did, no, why did he have barely any followers for the first 13 years of his ministry? Well, yeah, yeah. But then suddenly after he came out back from Medina, then he had more followers. Yeah. So uh, effectively, like, yeah. it's, it's not, it's, it's like, oh, that's a bit suspicious. Like, normally prophets have more than a uh, hundred followers after, after 13 years and of then he I'm a, a I'm military not, leader I'm with yeah. a lot of money. So it's, I'm it's not like, saying that the, the low number is a problem, by the way. I'm not yeah. saying But that. you are. No, no. Because your, your, your argument literally is, if he did all these miracles, why is the majority of the crowd chanting for him to die? Yeah. My thing was, the storyline to me doesn't make any sense. Right? Yeah. When we have the situation... Skip to the ending then. Jesus had to die. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So yeah. made it so Jesus yeah. died. And so we, therefore half of the crowd... The people half or the half, them, I'd was, say the majority, well, the overwhelming say, when majority. When more people are... If 51 people are shouting and 49 people are shouting, you hear, you hear the 51 people. But there's no mention of a 49 people. Nah, I, on, I think, I yeah, think yeah, the yeah. problem is we're arguing from speculation. Yeah. The problem I have is yeah, like Jesus was opinion. taken from the Garden of Gethsemane late at night. Nobody would have even known oh, yeah. he was there yeah. other than his disciples. And Peter, in fact, tried to save Jesus because he took out his sword and locked his ear. Yeah. I mean, accounts like, obviously, I think it's Matthew's account that says it's Matthew. it was like... Uh, whoever yeah, whoever was, lives by a sword dies by a sword. Yeah, yeah stuff like sense. that. So look, look, long story short, like there were... Maybe it was the case that many of his followers weren't aware where he was at that time. They didn't know he was. Maybe they went home, like David rightly said. A while ago, yeah. It wasn't I mean, like it, this is yeah, not a real a problem. Opinion, I don't. I don't. Yeah, they they, they, they didn't nation. have WhatsApp. They're like, yo, yeah, you guys yo, get Jesus, get group, man. Roll, roll, roll up, man. <laughs> roll up, man. All, all the disciples ran away, though, so they did know. How do you know what? No, no. Well, that's what he said. No, we're talking about. Yeah, the disciples ran away. We know that. Yeah, yeah, we know that from the Bible. We're talking of those who saw the miracles, yeah. the 9,000, the 5,000, not, 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 not the 11. I think there's well, more than that, well, by the way. I believe a that... A lot more happened. Sure. A lot more right. happened in this ministry, yeah. yeah. So I, I, New I believe yeah. that in the in Garden of Gethsemane, when it says that the disciples ran, it was talking about those who were in the immediate purview of him at that time. So, the, the, so the, the we're talking about the 9,000 okay. or whatsoever. You are making an inference, though. The it's an inference based on the there. text. So it's well, not really... It's, I mean, so is mine. But here's the thing, right? But here's the thing, look, the problem is, we still have the problem of the, you yeah. interpreting your Quran, which the, 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 the half the scholars themselves David, do all the time, and gonna, adding, a, adding things to the Quran that are not there. Well, Danny Luck will still be here, mate. So. No, I'll find you, I'll find yeah, you. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. fine. The adding things to the, the text that are not emphatically there, and then claiming, well, they're there because according to this tafsir, it says they're there. If, if you can do that, so can we. We can make the same tafsir that you can. In fact, I think church fathers agree with me, not you. So, so do the church fathers say that half of the group was... was uh, no. I didn't say half. So yeah, I mean, that was rude. That's the torture. I didn't say half the group was there. Yeah, that was, okay. Okay. John said. Oh, I see. Okay. So, yeah. do the church fathers say that all the ones who believed him before ran away? No. Other than, um, no, do they say other than the disciples? No, no, what, they, they don't, what they do mention is basically this. Look, that people witnessed Jesus being taken in the Garden of Gethsemane, but that those disciples in immediate purview, like, for example, the 12 disciples, for example, would have been the ones that had fled. Right. But okay. the, the, the actual, so we're talking about many disciples right now, they actually would have went home. There were more than 12. This was actually mentioned, for example, where is it? It's, it's the Samaritans, for example. So yeah. a group of Samaritans actually believed in Jesus Christ, yeah. but they didn't follow him. They stayed where they were. Yeah. Oh, the good, the, the, the Samaritans. Samaritans. The, yeah, there were, there were even I know there's a parable people. about the Samaritans. I think it's John 4, is it Samaritan woman or Samaritan? The, the Canaanite were, woman? Ca is that a case? No, no, that's, that's different. The, the one who calls the dog. The one by, by the well. No, 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 no it's a Samaritan. She meet, the one by the well. Jesus meets a Samaritan by the well. Yeah. And then she goes and says, oh, look, Jesus has, has yeah. known all the things that I've done yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And John, and, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then Jesus actually goes to that town and stays with them and they believe him. Yeah, right? yeah. They didn't all follow him. They stayed where they were. So it's, it's there's even, a, there's where even a funnier one. Oh, I, I can't remember if it's in Matthew or not, but it's a case where the same thing happens. Christ is a miracle for an individual. And the individual goes to his town and tells the people of that miracle. And the people come out of the town, say that they don't want Christ here. And they, yeah, they yeah, want yeah. to go elsewhere. Oh yeah, you're talking about yeah. the cleansing of the yeah. Nazarene, yeah. no, the, the, the Gadarene demon act. Basically, you know, the divine yeah, change yeah, yeah, has come yeah, out. Chains, yeah. It's like just raging and then basically they heal him completely. And they're like, oh, please leave our land. Right? And he just basically so just What that shows you is that even those who saw the miracles, like the Quran says a little bit, still yeah, yeah. didn't believe. And in fact, didn't even want him to come near them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so again, the majority of his true followers might not have been at that particular hearing. It happened overnight. So unless somehow they were somehow able to gather in unison in that one area, 
then likely those who believed in Christ didn't even know it was happening at the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's Again, it sounds like you're making a big inference. Explain to me I, how I'm they gonna, I'm going to leave you up because I've been yeah. talking for like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to keep talking? Or what, what's this? Uh, I mean, are you going to wrap up? I don't know. Uh, I what what, what y'all want to do? Um, I, I, I did want to just mention one more thing because we kind of... Uh, no, no, you, no. You, it was, it was, it was, said that before, no, 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 because it was about the Davidic line. And oh, I want yeah, to say, yeah. and you mentioned obviously that the, the, um, the Levitical priesthood. So the reason why for me okay. that Jesus cannot be, well, A, I don't believe he can be from the line of David because he doesn't have a father. That's my first argument. My second argument. Father by adoption. Fa fa okay, that's the, your response. So well, uh, he also cannot be a high priest. He cannot be a high priest because he does not come from the line of Aaron. So he ha because look, he has no lineage. So he can't come from either one. So, so both those narratives are about him being the Messiah and also the high priest, they both collapse because his lineage is non-existent. And by the way, you can't be both from the line of David and from the line of Aaron. That's not how it works, right? You've got one line for this, one line for that. You have to make up your mind. And both lines are problematic, to be honest with you, for, for Jesus, right? If you don't have a father, well, then you have no lineage. I'll give you the verse. Is that if you don't have a father, you have no lineage. But I think you you brought this up with Kate, and she told you that if, if there is no if there are no males yeah. uh, in the family, then the lineage can be taken from the females. Yeah, it can uh, be by, ne by necessity. It can be. Yeah. That's yeah. what you say. This whole business. numbers numbers one eighteen. Hey, Suleiman, long time man. We do it back here, man. We do <laughs> long oh, time. So long time. In regards to the high. No, no, wait, wait. Let me, let me just get the numbers one, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, this is about the bloodline, yeah. Yeah. So, and they assembled all the congregation on the first day of the second month, and they recited their ancestry by families, by their father's houses, according yeah, to the number of names from 20 years old and above, each one individually. That the father's houses. That's the telling oh, yeah. of an event. Yeah. It doesn't say simply that you have to only um, uh, announce your ancestry from your, your father's Yeah, yeah, life. that's, that's it, never, it, that's, it, so if you don't have it, then yeah. you, you fine, can't fine. say it. So Tell like, me where in the Old Testament it says you can come from, your, 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 the lineage comes from the yeah. mother's so, side. So in a generational lineage, for example, yeah. if you like, numbers for itself, like, we're counting the numbers of different houses, for example. This is during the time of Moses. But if you read later, like the mosaic, like the idea of the Moses here, the mosaic like principles, they changed. There was judges now to look after Israel. And then there was finally a king. So it's no longer by lineage that people, for example, even, I think Moses comes from the tribe of Levi. Yeah, you know that? Uh, Moses, I mean, yeah, he would do, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. descendants of Moses is David, that's a fact. Uh, descendants of, oh, I don't know about that. I think it's an historical fact. I, I, I would say more a bloody I don't, I can't, I can't say yes or no. I would say more of a Jewish, but I, I do believe it could be the okay. case that Moses from, is directly connected to the line of David. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'd need to look that up, right? right? Well, it would be good to look it up. Yeah, but, I'll look but, it up. But presupposing that, I think it's safe to say that he does come from a religious it, it, Yeah, it, if that's the case, that means that you can make the argument that two lines converge in one place, because remember, but then again, you have the problem where Moses isn't a Messiah, right? He's not a Messiah, he's a prophet, but he's not a Messiah. Do you know what Messiah means? Messiah means an anointed one. Anointed one, do you yeah, know what yeah. that means? Someone who's chosen by God. Someone who's chosen by God to fulfill a specific role. Yes. Right? Yes. Was Moses chosen? Uh, yeah, but remember, even you guys believe that Messiah is another title altogether, right? It's right, another right. category, right? The, the, the messianic figure, the final Messiah. Because then you can say Adam was anointed. Yeah, we, we can say that. We can say that. There's no I problem. I don't know. With that. But then you guys, hang on, you guys always say there's only one Messiah, it's Jesus. No, no, we say the final Messiah is Jesus. We is that we, Cyrus, that's uh, the first Cyrus, time I'm hearing that. Cyrus is called the Messiah, do you yeah. realize? Oh yeah, I, I yeah. said that to you, yeah, I know. I mean, I and there's that. many, who, he, there's even a guy named Cyrus who comes here and claims that, yeah, like Cyrus Messiah because he's, he's literally God on earth or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what Cyrus means? Uh, no. Koresh, it comes from the, the, the word Koresh, right? It also, I've heard the opposite, that Koresh yeah. comes from, from Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, no, wow. sorry, 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 yeah. that's what I meant. Koresh is, that's Oh, the, now he's going to Mahamish yeah. tribe, you know, the, the Koreshi tribe. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, no, no, Koresh is the actual name, the Hebrew. For, for Cyrus, Koresh. Fair enough. I mean, like Cyrus was chosen to, to free the yeah. Israelites from Babylon, so he became God's anointed, and yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah, it was even told, foretold, uh, that, that that would happen. But he anointed, like, for example, the angel of the Lord, for example. The angel of the Lord is, has, doesn't have a name. He's just called the angel well, of the Lord. The, 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 well, the Talmud says it could be Michael. I don't care what the Talmud says, mate. Me. They also say it could be a, a Gabriel as well. That, it also says that Jesus was buried in Exmoor. I could care less what the Talmud says. I mean, look, <laughs> to be honest, with you, if you're going to make appeals to the, to the Talmud when it comes to Christianity, then that, that's the equivalent of me, uh, of, for example, of me making um, equivocations to the, like uh, the Sikh scripture in order to explain Islam. 
Yeah, yeah. It comes <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, I understand. And, and it's, it's all related. Well, they would argue it doesn't come afterwards. They'd, uh, they'd argue they have an oral tradition that goes all the way back. Sure, sure. That's the they, argument they, they would they make. They might, but rabbinical Judaism, it comes after Christianity. That's a historical fact. Also, Jeremiah 31, 31 literally well, I mean, says if that. Well, I remember the Pharisees, yeah, the, the, sorry, the Orthodox no, right, Jews right. believe they come from the Pharisees, so, and the Pharisees predate Christianity, so. No, but the, the, the idea of, uh, of writing down the oral tradition, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, well, the, the, the comings of that start from after Christianity. Yeah, yeah okay, fine. But I mean, so the, 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 the tradition of writing down the Tanakh doesn't come until like a thousand years after Moses. You know, so I mean, that, just because something isn't penned doesn't but, mean um, that it's... Look, but I wouldn't then make the argument that Christianity predates Judaism as a result. You wouldn't what, I wouldn't then make the argument that Christianity predates Judaism as a result. However, I will make the argument that it predates rabbinic Judaism. Okay, fine, fine, fine. But remember, again, rabbinic Judaism predates Christianity. It, I just told you that it didn't. It does. It, no, does. it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, 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 the, the Talmud was the written Pharisees, in the first century. Wait, wait, wait. But the, yeah, I understand. Under Rabbi Gamliel, yeah. right? So, who apparently is a teacher of Paul. Anyway. I mean, not Gamliel, no, that's, 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 it's attributed to Gamliel, but I think it was written, but it was written in the third century. Well, his students, his students, right? They his supposed students, yeah. yeah. But uh, do you believe that Paul was a student of Gamaliel? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Okay, why do you think that? I mean, Paul of Tarsus, well, because ultimately, the Bible, like you would say, the Quran says, for example, that gave the angel Gabriel sent Quran, the Quran to Muhammad and yeah. received it. Like, like you so you, okay, so you would accept it by virtue of it being in the New Testament? Or, yeah, yeah. Th that's why you accept yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but here's the problem you see what, with that narrative. Gamaliel. Uh, by the way, if you're going to make historical arguments, I just want to stop you there. If you're going to make historical arguments, am I? You can, no, I'm not. It's from the Bible. Well, you, I'm, I'm Bible. just saying, you can't find historical Esau or historical Moses no, no, from fine, your Quran or even historical it's Abraham. Fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I, I understand. I understand. Right. Well, I, it's actually from the New Testament. Right? Right, yeah, so we know that obviously Paul, his, his job was to go and persecute Christians, right? Yeah. And he was actually on his way to Damascus when he had the revelation. And, yep. right, yeah. Okay, so the problem I have with this story is that Paul himself, again, in, I'm only sticking in the New Testament, no history here, right? In the New Testament, he makes a claim that he's the Pharisee of Pharisees. You agree? Yeah, he does. Yeah, and he makes a claim that he's a student of Gamaliel. Yeah. You agree with that as well? Perfect, yeah. okay. Now, if we read Acts, Gamaliel actually says, do not persecute the Christians. If they're upon falsehood, then they will disappear, mm. right? But if they're upon truth, well, there's nothing you can do about it anyway. Mm. So Gamaliel gives a direct argument from Acts. I'm not giving anything. I mean, I, you would say Acts is historical. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So Acts, which is a historical document, according to you, yeah. right, is saying that he is a student of, of uh, Gamaliel, and his teacher Gamaliel is saying, do not persecute them. And when he's persecuting the Christians, he's doing it under the authority of who? Gamaliel, yeah. No, no, not Gamaliel. Oh, sorry, not Gamaliel, sorry. No, not the Pharisees. I believe it was the Pharisees. Ray, where's it going? The high priest of Jerusalem. Yeah, 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 the high priest, sorry, yeah. Who is a? He's a Pharisee. He's a Sadducee. He's a oh yeah, the he's high a priest. Sadducee. Remember, yeah, the what? high priest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he's, a, he's a Sadducee, right? He's a Sadducee. So, and this is why I say there's some things in the narrative of the New Testament that just don't sit right with me. This is one of them, right? So, I'm expected to believe, well, you guys are as well, that the student, the best student of Gamaliel, the Pharisee of Pharisees, the best. Okay, he not only well, he went. Doesn't, he doesn't say that part. Fine, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm ad libbing a bit. Yeah, no problem. Okay, fine. Right. We're expected to believe that the best of his students, the Pharisee of Pharisees, Pharisee of Pharisees is a big statement, by the way, that means like you are the best, right? He's not only going against the advice and command of his teacher, Gamaliel, supposed teacher Gamaliel, but he's also taking orders from the high priest of Jerusalem, who's a Sadducee. I don't see a problem with that. I don't know. No, I, I don't really see a problem. Because again, like, we, we can interpret like, as, as the end of the day, like, Paul, like, for example, He's been educated by Pharisees. Yep. We don't know when exactly he was under the teachings of Gamaliel. It doesn't really state that at all. Uh, I was going to mention but that. Is that exactly when is, when is uh, Gamaliel making that statement? Is, yeah. this, is this before? Is this before the, the event or after the event? Or after the, yeah. So yeah. That's right, what we we don't really know hey, that. If, if it's an act, it has to be after. Then. Yeah, it has to be after yeah. the verse. Yeah, written by Luke, right? Yeah. So it would be, it would be well, Luke's one of the students. Of, well, I mean, it doesn't say, it doesn't give a chronology of events, right? But again, but I, I do believe it makes sense if it's after. I don't, I don't believe it was before. I think it was after. If it's an Acts, it should be after. It was Acts 9, I think. Yeah. I mean, if you want to bring it out, we'll yeah, we'll see if I it's think it's Acts 21 together. recounts the, the same event as well. So in Acts 9, like obviously, like Paul's on the road to Damascus. Yep. He gets blinded and stuff like that. He's, he's about to just basically go and hand them over to prison. Oh, yeah. Christians. Who? He's about to commit Christians over to prison. And then, yeah. yeah, long story short, he's blinded and stuff like that. I saw the whole thing about Gamaliel and the Sages. I mean, like, 
Okay, no, I don't think it's a problem. Axe 5. Is Axe 5? Axe 5, 38 to 39. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and oh, let yeah, them coming. alone. Yeah, yeah. Let them alone, right? For it, for if the council or this work be of men, it will come to naught, as in it will, it will be obvious, right? But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, right. lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So that's exactly how I sort of rendered it before, but right? Just in a complicated you, way. Can you then tell me that this was said before he went to... Uh, the well, I don't know, Acts 5. I, mean, I don't know what's happening in Acts 5. Uh, uh, I think in the book of Acts, this is post-conversion, uh, because this, this is when Paul comes to the... Um, the Council of Jerusalem to have that conversation with, with the uh, disciples to make no, sure. I don't want, I don't want to get uh, yeah. I don't want to get it wrong because I do think it's Acts nine. I don't want to get because this thing. I want to be correct with the text. Wait, what's Acts nine? Uh, the, the conversion. Oh, I think oh, it's Acts nine. It is Acts nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, 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 nine, yeah. I think that the issue we have here is not what what's happening. So when Gamaliel says that, for example, is Paul at this council? And the other thing is like, what's the word? So like, Gamaliel's still using accusative language. He's saying, is, if this thing they're doing is, is, is of naught, then let it be. You don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, he's not using language that would infer that he somehow agrees with what, what Christians are doing. Yeah. Right. So in, in a sense, he could have ordered Paul of Tarsus to do that. Paul could have been in another region, oh, out to go and destroy them. What, within the space of, what, three days? He oh, didn't so hear what Gamaliel said. Oh, that could happen that's as well. That's interesting, that's interesting. I mean, again, it sounds like an argument from saying, but what, what I'm saying is basically, look. But I, was, I would still find it strange that a Pharisee of Pharisees is taking orders from a Sadducee, a high, the high priest of Jerusalem. I'd still find that strange. Even, even, okay, I can see what you if, said before. Even I can if see the high priest, maybe he didn't a, hear it. Okay, fine. Even if the high priest is a side, you see the Pharisees have to listen to him. Yeah, he's a high priest. That's so. It, it, that's it, not it, really. It's, a it's not like it's like fashion wars where they just don't ignore each other completely. Pharise yeah, but the Pharisees wouldn't. No, they wouldn't deal with the Sadducees. They believe they're heretics. If the high priest was a Sadducee, yeah. then they would have no choice but to follow his commands. The high, yeah, but that, I know. But the Pharisees, their, their theology is is antithetical to the to the to the, well, well, the What was their theology? Their theology was that yeah, there, they, was no there was no of raising the dead, of the dead and, and the Pharisees believed that there was raising the dead. There's a few other things as There's well. There's a few other things yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was like they were antithetical. They were just they were still part of the Jewish community as a yeah. whole. They weren't against each other because, for example, when 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 Paul had, no not Paul, sorry when Jesus addresses a Pharisee immediately after he addresses a Pharisee about you know. Uh, about the raising of the dead, and, he, and then he goes on to mention about about the fact that he's the son of David, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, the, the, uh, Matthew. Uh, okay, no, I, I've got it. The, the one about him, uh, about who did David called the Christ. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Who did David? One. So that was in the immediate purview of where the Pharisees were. So they weren't just out there stoning him like like certain Shias do, do to certain Sunnis, oh, and Lord. vice versa. Oh, <laughs> So they, uh, were, they were still part we, of a We don't get on with them too well. Uh, I don't history. see it. Historically, I, I don't know. historically. We don't, we don't see a problem wouldn't it be ironic that. if the Shias end up being that one set that I go to heaven and everyone else I mean, goes to hell? I mean, that's the thing. Who, yeah, wouldn't that's that's that be We've had this conversation no before. Way, mate. <laughs> who, who, are the, who are the set that go to heaven? You wouldn't that be ironic? Whoever Sunni. holds on to the Quran and the Sunnah. The, the Sunnah, yeah. But the Quran doesn't say this. But The Sunnah is very arbitrary and the Quran is like... Well, I wouldn't say it's arbitrary. I mean, again, I could prove to you the veracity of Hadith. Right, and I can prove to you that the, the 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 Shia Hadith are very, very, very removed from from that time and place. Right, but in I fact, you prove to you that your Hadith is removed from that place. All you could do is show me chains of people. No, but no. by the way, there's one chain that just says two Muhammads. I think that's for that won't be like a Sahih though. But yeah, Sahih Al Bukhari. Sorry, Sahih Al Bukhari. Oh, well, that's impossible. It needs to be in a snad. There's literally two Muhammads in the chain. Two Muhammads. Yeah, two Muhammads. Okay, well that that that, that doesn't No, no, make just sense. the name, like yeah. Muhammad and Muhammad. Yeah. No Ibn, no this yeah. and that. You, you need to remember something, right? You need to understand who Bukhari was. Right. Bukhari was, you know where he was from, right? Uzbekistan. Or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bukhara, right? That's where it goes. Bukhara is like in Uzbekistan, and he actually was a student of Ahmed Muslim? ibn Hanbal. Huh? Was it Muslim? Okay, Muslim right. ibn Hajjaj was also from there. Yes. Wasn't Hanbal late? Hanbal is the fourth Imam. So Hanbal was the was the the, uh, the student of Imam Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i was a student of Imam Malik, and Imam Malik was a student of Imam Abu Hanifa. And Imam Abu Hanifa, he was with the companions. Like, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. And so was to be fair, so was Imam Malik. So it's I know the Christians say it's removed. Technically, the the penning into a codex is removed. I grant you that. Yeah, we don't have that. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is removed. Centuries old. Fine, it, two two, cent two centuries we call it, right? right. Two hundred years. Okay. However, we have a clear line, right? From Imam Bukhari all the way to Imam Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, his his teacher. Well, and by the way, by the way, just as a very important point, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal actually read his codex. He read Codex Sahih Bukhari. Hmm. 
and he actually agreed with it. In fact, he used to say the greatest book of hadith before I read this one was, was Imam Muslim. Malik's. No, no, was not Muslim? Muslims, a little bit after, a little bit after. Muslims like two or three years. They actually died together in, in uh, Uzbekistan. So yeah. why is it the only surviving copy, like, earliest? It's like, for example, Imam Malik or like... Imam Some, Malik? Yeah. Because oh, Imam Malik, oh, well, his, his codex. Yeah. Why yeah, is so he the, the earliest surviving copy you have got? The, the manuscript. Yeah. Um, I mean, there, there, could be, there could be many reasons for that. I mean, uh, for ah, I, have, I know the answer to this. Idiot, right. Uh, the sacking of Baghdad. In the in the 1200s, we lost everything. We lost basically everything. Everything. Mostly everything. Because remember, that's Baghdad. That, that, imagine we can make that same argument for uh, the first hundred years of Christianity. Well, we can. We can. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we had no, the no, manuscripts, but we lost them. <laughs> but luckily for us, luckily, luckily, we had more than one learning center. Right? We had so a learning. I, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I w we had a learning center. The Omeyyads survived in Spain yeah. for a long time until, obviously, you know, the Inquisition. We're not going to go there, right? <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. when the I don't think I had anything to do. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, fair enough. Well, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. We're with the Inquisitions, right? The Muslims weren't wearing brains when they came over them in the first time, anyway. They were killing people like, like all throughout Europe. Yeah, the Soldier Turks were just like butchering people, dude. Uh, France, so. I don't. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, but very simply. I, you mean the Battle of Tours? The Battle of Tours? No, the, the Battle of Tours was about to, to, um, to extend be, uh, in, into France and then into further. That, it was a Europe. raiding party. Huh? It was a raiding party. We, it, it, it wasn't a raiding party. It was, it was. It, it was an invasion attempt. I mean, because, yeah, it's still an invasion because, because you are technically, but it's still a raiding because party. Because afterwards, there were no further attempts made to go into France. Yeah, yeah, because they, they realized that they had, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Marti uh, Martin Charles, yeah. Charles the Hammer, the, right? The, the grandfather yeah. of uh, Charlemagne. Yeah, we didn't, yeah, we didn't uh, want to. Charlemagne is based, man. We didn't want, we didn't want, look, <laughs> we didn't see a need South to extend, Charlemagne, expand man. anymore. Right, we uh, had we uh, had Spain. I don't know about that. Uh, well, I mean, but you just mentioned. You just Islam mentioned. Islam every, enter every household. How can it enter every household if it stops in France? Yeah. Well, you know? well, through through Dawa and these sort of things, right? Through Dawa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the combo. You're telling me Muhammad, Muhammad himself said in Sahih al Bukhari that spread the spread the word through Dawa and and, and giving fruits. Uh, I, th I think he said I have been commanded to fight everybody. Yeah, command, he said he's been commanded to fight everybody <laughs> until, until they until. submit or pay the judge. Um, I, 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 said, but... I think that's in context of Fatah Mecca, the victory of Mecca. Sure thing. Yeah, do, yeah. Do you have Do you have any other hadith that, that tell that where Muhammad says I have been commanded to give dawah and food to people until they accept Islam? Yes, in the Quran, talks about dawah. Where, 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 no, no, where, where does Muhammad say I have been commanded to give dawah to people until they accept Islam and don't pay jizya? No, 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 remember this. And again, the context yeah. of that, the context of that is Fatah Mecca, right? So the, remember, the way we understand this, and this is what the scholars agree on as well, the Arabian Peninsula was supposed to be rededicated to the worship of the God of Abraham, right? So anybody who remains in there, you do have an ultimatum, right? The ultimatum is you accept Islam, okay. right? Or you go somewhere else. So, and if you refuse to wait, do both... Wait, 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 wait. Did you, just, did you just say go somewhere else? Because Muhammad didn't say go somewhere else. Mm. He said you either obey it or you're dead. That's it. No, no. He said, he said that that's why he sent um, certain people out of the Arabian Peninsula. So when, when, he, when, he, when he attacked and persecuted and killed the, the Banu Quraysh Jews... Banu Quraysh? Yeah, I think they're called Banu Quraysh. Banu Quraysh, the, the Jewish about, tribe. Yeah, yeah. yeah when, when he attacked them... And by the way, they were unaware, so they didn't even know it was going to happen. Right? Would, well, would they, you were, say then, they were aware that they committed treason. But, but did they have the right to then leave, or were they imprisoned, some of them, taken slaves, some of them, and then murdered the males? Well, you got to remember, uh, yeah, I'm glad you said the males, but, yeah. uh, because that's from Ibn Ishaq. But the, yeah. the, in Sahih Bukhari, it says they killed all the warriors. That's right. Sahih Bukhari. AKA males. Yeah. Well, the warriors. The males. The, the males would have been the warriors. Yeah. I, I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. Because remember, uh, they all had teeth, like literally say, like, once a person grows pubic hair, they're ready for war. So it's like. Well, no, but also remember when, when the guy came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and presented himself, uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam still, because he was 14 at this time, and so you would have pubic hair. He looked at him, saw that he wasn't ready for war, he said, no, 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 not yet. And then it was like two years later, he came back and he was a bit bigger, and he said, yeah, okay, he's ready for war now. It, but that, that's not what it said. That's it, not it, what it, it said. It was strictly about pubic hair only. It was literally about no, pubic hair. I know. That's it, it didn't mention size. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's in Ibn Ishaq. The pubic hair's in Ibn Ishaq. Right? And Ibn Ishaq is not as authentic as Bukhari, we would no, say. It's in a hadith, I'm yeah. just showing you. Yeah, yeah, it's in the hadith. Yeah. Let, me, let me just get up, sorry. What time is it? I've got to go in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, we're getting pulled in, man, pulled in. Let's, we can finish on this. We can yeah, it's fine. I like Banu Quraitha. Uh, uh, Banu Quraitha is nice. Yeah. Wait, what? Banu Quraitha, I love Banu Quraitha. You love the Mohammedan? You run well, him out and put I mean, <laughs> Look, when it and comes to the Jewish people, well, right? Well, while he mentions that, I was going to mention uh, the, the idea of. Um, the uh, the fighting all people until they accept um, 
uh, ALO or whatever, right? It's only um, immediate to the current vicinity. Then what about the expansionist um, capability of Islam, yeah. where they, uh, following the death of Muhammad, went into other parts yes. of the world and then did the exact same thing Muhammad was doing in Arabia. Were they wrong in doing that? No. Or, or was there, is there scope, that means that the, the scope within that, that, that context that Muhammad was talking about for Muslim armies to go into non-Muslim lands, fight battles and potentially conquer them, and then also um, establish that same line of thinking that in your argument was meant for Arabia in other parts of the world like Egypt and Syria. Yeah, so, so the argument for that is we didn't start that war. That's the argument. We didn't start it. Um, it was actually started by the Byzantines and also the Sassanids as well. We're, we're coming from the east in uh, northern Arabia. And so it was a reaction. But no, nobody, uh, so uh, Egypt was conquered in, uh, in uh, three, uh, sorry, 638. They didn't do anything. I'm the Nasi, yeah, yeah, I'm the they, they didn't do anything to the... Uh, the well, the, you're the part of the Byzantine Empire. Egypt? Yeah, yeah, at in the 638. time. 638. Yeah, it was part of the Byzantine Empire, yeah. It was taken by the Persians briefly before that, um, but it was taken back by the Byzantines. Then can you show me an example of Egyptian Byzantines supposedly? I wrote to Nafi inquiring of him whether it was necessary to extend to, dis to disbelievers an invitation to accept Islam before meeting them in a fight. Yeah. He wrote in reply to me that it was necessary in the early days of Islam. Right, that's fine. The Messiah of Allah made a raid upon Banu Mustalik, right? While they were unaware... That's not a Jewish tribe, by the way. That's not a Jewish tribe. No, it's not a Jewish tribe. Right, so Banu Quraysh, Banu... Banu Quraysh, Banu Ghunay, Ghunayka, and Banu Nadir, were the three. Right, you did, but the Banu, that doesn't mean No, Jew. Banu just means tribe. Oh, well, like, like the prophets from Bani Hashim. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, it's still a tribe, so... Yeah, like, yeah, it's so a tribe. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Banu yeah. Mustalik, while they were unaware and their cattle oh, yes. were having a drink at the water, he killed those who fought and imprisoned others. On that very day, he captured Jurairah bin Al-Harif. Nafi said that this tradition was laid to him by Abdullah ibn Himar. Who himself was among the raid. So basically, he killed them yeah. after making a raid on them unaware. Uh, yes, yes, because right. they're at war. They're at war. It's so a raid. It's a war. But, but it's a war. just affirms my point. Muhammad didn't go to preach Darwa and to give people free Qurans. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he yeah. went to murder yeah. people and I'm, to take over the Arabian but you Peninsula. Remember, this is a time of war, right? And remember, the time of Mecca, there was no war, right? right. There was persecution, but there was no war. In which case, you give Darwa, like we're doing here. We're not at war with anyone here. Right, is we're just we're, we're living here in this country peacefully. And but harmony. we're talking about a group that were unaware. They were not attacking Muhammad. Otherwise, they would have been no, no, aware. No, this this is one of the Arab tribes that were part of Quraysh. Yeah. Because right. what did you say? That what was the area called? Because if you say yeah. the area, you said it, and I, I it clicked with me because it's near Mecca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the basically it's, it's Banu Mustali, Banu yeah. Mustali. Yeah, yeah. Captured. Bin Arif. Doesn't say the era. Wait, wait. I wrote to Nafi inquiring from him whether it was necessary to extend to disbelievers an invitation to accept Islam. So this is talking about disbelievers, by the way. Can't be talking about Muslims. Yeah, right? yeah. Before meeting them in a fight, he wrote in reply to me that it was necessary in the early days of Islam. The Meshav Allah made a raid upon Banu Mr. Leek while they were unaware and their cattle were having a drink okay. of the water. He killed those who fought and imprisoned others on that very okay. day. He Nobody's noticed. <laughs> Can you calm down a bit, man? Seriously, it's bloody nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's just like, I'm trying to read. Jason, but, it's Jason, Jason, man. They can hear you. Yeah, that's fine. Jariah bin Al-Harif Snafi said that this tradition was related to him by Abdullah bin Omar. So it doesn't really mention where it was from. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to do some research on that. Bani Masalik, yeah? Masalik. Yeah, Bani Masalik. Right. Masalik. I'll, I'll do some research on that. Do you want a hadith number at all? He's running that's away. Right. I'm, I'm turned up. I'll, and you've done him, and now he don't love me no more. All right, uh, we, we did have an hour conversation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for being on. We've been here for longer than an hour. I've got to be honest, I can't. Yeah. Look, I can't he he went and he's come back and we're still here. Well, I've, I've aged, but I've got a load of evidence for you, but not at my fingertips. If, if, on my if phone. you want to have a conversation, I don't mind. I mean, I'm done here. I want to yeah, chat with you, John. I'll no, speak to you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a nice conversation anyway. To be I think it's one of our best of Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, frenemies. Are frenemies? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, really it's a bromance. Right. Let's not yeah, pretend. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Um, okay. That's just me. Thank yeah. God for eating us. Yeah, we, 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 sure, sure. We just argue about which. Let me just fill him yeah. in on the. So it's all the. It's prophecy, fulfilled prophecies of Jesus, but not this second. It's not that they haven't been fulfilled. It's that. I don't know who's